Yeah, as always, it's me, Emperor AP, and plenty of you might have seen the uh, thumbnail of this video with me holding this stick up in the air. Uh, well, I think this is kind of uh, symbolism for what a lot of micronations want to achieve, right? Uh, they really want to put their name behind something. They really want to be able to stand tall and proud and, you know, raise their banner in the air and say, this is what we are. We're Eternians. We're uh, whatever, whatever your micronation is and we're proud. Uh, we want a community, but this isn't just something that is solely connected to micronationalism. Activists all around the world do this all the time, whether it's with a banner for a micronation, whether it's with a banner for their home country, whatever it is, people with, with signs that uh, show their support for a particular cause, people want to make change. They want to be able to do something that makes a difference in the world, and they want to know how to do that. That's something that's really easily said, but very oftentimes incredibly difficult to do. So I want to talk about that and I want to be able to move forward with not only how people do that in general, learning from uh, the past and learning from different movements that have occurred all around the world, but actually moving forward to micronationalism and understanding from a unique micronational perspective how we can change the world and what we can do to better our communities, to improve the lives that people are living around us, and to actually make a larger difference. So I want to talk about that. Uh, good morning, Vincent. It's good to see you. Uh, joking Gamers, says hi it's good to see you joking thank you for hanging out here uh kingdom of Hispania says kind of lonely here it's good to see you kingdom of Hispania. Uh, i'm sorry to hear that you're lonely but i hope that joining the chat and hanging out with friends uh can help with that um one of the biggest things that i, I really want to get across is that uh, micronations are not unique to this of course there are plenty of great examples of micronations who are doing that actively first off christian good morning it's good to see you uh iron says did you hear of the united provinces of utopia um i don't think fully. Uh, somebody messaged me about them a while back. I think even in the last stream, somebody mentioned the words like utopia, but I, I haven't uh, been updated on it. I don't really know what's happening. Uh, good to see you, though. Uh, Kingdom of Gnome says, glory to you. Hey, it's good to see you, Kingdom of Gnome. I've been seeing your uh, your TikToks as well. It's good to see you. Uh, and thank you so much for hanging out with us and supporting our stream. It really means a lot. Uh, I laughed at your, uh, oh goodness, what was it? Uh, it was uh, Churdley's like uh, duet thing where you're like on the toilet. That was that was a meme and a half. I appreciate it, uh, and I, I'm glad you guys are here. It means a lot. Again, if you want to like the video to help show support and get more people in the chat, it does help. But uh, all that aside, for the people who are watching this video after it goes live, I really want to be able to point out and talk about the concept that micronations are not unique to this. This is something that. Uh, again, activists have been pursuing for uh, hundreds of years, you know, uh, all the way back to, you know, the deposing monarchs uh, in uh, revolutions in France and Britain uh, in you know, all over the world in China, uh, moving forward to, uh, you know, uh, modern day activism, uh, even, you know, uh, early activism in the United States dealing with women's suffrage, civil rights. Um, these things are continued fights that people are moving toward, and that's one of the biggest highlights that I want to talk about. No movement, no political action in any way is ever done. You can never say, oh, okay, well, we started this thing and we got what we wanted, so that's it. Uh, we're, we, we achieved everything. We were successful. Uh, that's the biggest point about activism and about moving forward with developing something serious. No matter how you're trying to pursue that goal, no matter how you're trying to get to the end result, you are not going to ever get 100% fully completed. There's always going to be work to do. There's always going to be something to push for. So never forget that. Don't feel like just because you haven't hit your end goal that, you know, there's something wrong or that there's a problem going on. The world is resistant to change. The world always feels like uh, it's going along the right path uh, and that things are going good. That's why there are so many people out there who are uh, very, very traditionalist. Uh, of course, traditions are sometimes a very good thing. Of course, uh, retaining our culture uh, can sometimes be very important to who we are as a people. But a lot of the time, when new change is brought about, when people want to see something develop and something benefit people, because there's legitimate reason for it, plenty of times people will bring up their culture or their traditions as a way to prevent that. They say, hey, uh, I hear what you're saying. You know, things are going... 
uh, good as they are, though. This has always been the tradition. This has always been the way things have been, but that doesn't always make it right. And so that's the big, big problem that I want to point out. People are resistant to change, and so your fight is going to be continuous. And when I say fight, I don't mean literal fight. I mean your continued activism, your struggle every day against whatever it is that you're trying to go for. And this is for micronations or not. This is for people who want to see change. There are plenty of things happening ongoing in the United States right now in particular that uh, make people very, very upset and that people have been living uh, for a certain way for a very long time and are seeing these uh, changes happening and these things adjusting very, very quickly that, uh, you know, make them feel uncomfortable and make them want to seek that change. So now more than ever, I think there are continued reasons to fight along with all the reasons that have been there before and continued reasons to try and push forward in helping our communities, empowering our people and allowing them to see that there is a positive future for change. Because even if if you don't achieve your goals right away you are still inspiring people and that's the big big point that's what you know holding a banner up is for that's what you know being able to chant and being able to uh support each other is all about is saying hey at the end of the day we are still here at the end of the day there is someone who is still representing your interests still fighting for you still trying to make the best life possible and so we're going to jump into specific reasons and ways that micronations can do that but we have to look at some positive influences first again in activism there are so many and i encourage you to do your research Anytime you see large marches, anytime you see, you know, the March on Washington with uh, Martin Luther King, uh, you know, anytime you see large sweeping changes, positive influence around the world, you can look at activists as a primary driver for that. You know, when you look at the protests um, uh, in Hong Kong, when you look at how long people for you know, uh, up until now are still actively protesting, still actively doing that for years and years and years, taking days, weeks, months out of their job to go and live and uh, fight for the thing that they want to see achieved. And sometimes those people are literally fighting. But in this scenario, we are talking about trying to make positive change through nonviolent action, through peaceful action. And that's what's really important to see larger change. When we try to do things violently, when we try to uh, be aggressive, and, and when we see other people being aggressive, it puts us off to their cause immediately. It makes us feel like, okay, well, sure, they, they feel a really uh, eager need uh, to do that. Maybe their cause is really important, but they're hurting people that I may care about. They're, you know, they're causing problems in ways that I feel like I can't support and get behind. So I think that a lot of the time, the nonviolent route is the best route. Again, looking at people like Gandhi, uh, there are, uh, like Martin Luther King Jr., um, those people had a rough time. They had some of the hardest time getting their activism through and actually achieving any semblance of hope for their people. But at the same time, they did it. Those are, again, few and far between, but there are so many people who have followed in their footsteps who have still made huge impacts on our lives today. Moving forward, talking about micronations. There are plenty of micronations who are great and wonderful at activism. You look at plenty of the micronations who are doing things specifically with climate change. You look at Flangensis, you look at West Antarctica. Those are groups that are actively promoting their entire ideology around saving the Antarctic and saving um, you know, the, the planet from climate change. So this is a huge, huge way that micronations can do that. You know, if you are embodying an entire idea, if your whole focus is toward one specific goal, that is a fantastic way to push for that goal, to be able to say things like, hey, we're an entire country of people who, in order to become a, a part of our country, you just have to agree that we need to save Antarctica, we need to save the penguins, you know. Uh, that is a wonderful way uh, to make a statement and to move forward. Now, that has some limitations to it as well that we're going to bring up, but the primary thing that I want you to see and I want you to focus on is the concept that this is huge for people. You know, you, you can really underestimate, even if a micronation isn't developing in a traditional sense, even if they aren't, you know, building houses and developing things and, you know, building factories and industries and stuff like that, there are just people on the internet who are happy to rally around a specific battle cry, a specific uh, concept for a way to make change in their lives. And so you'll see these countries, like uh, Bardot, for example, 
uh, dealing with nature as well and you know uh, communing with nature you will see all of these different groups who are having pictures of people who are sending them stuff uh, and saying hey I planted a garden I you know raised the flag I donated this much to Antarctica and they're all so hyper focused on this one goal that it spans across national boundaries it spans across ideologies it spans across uh, you know, government institutions. I think one of the most beautiful things about that type of activist micronation is that they're not really trying to focus on these larger things like, uh, some of them certainly are, but a lot of them aren't trying to focus on things as much in infrastructure. They're trying to focus more on the larger ideology that they're pushing and they do it very well. Again, there are some cons for that if you're trying to actually develop a full-scale community, but the benefit of it is that you can really focus on getting people to rally behind your cause and the concept. Uh, if you make your citizenship and your uh, connection to your community so open that anybody who just has a same ideological belief as you can become a part of it, they will a lot of the time take action into their own hands because all it means to be a part of West Antarctica is to support Antarctica. So that being the case, uh, people can go out of their way and say, hey, I did this uh, for West Antarctica. I did that for West Antarctica because they don't feel like they need some specific permissions or some specific, uh, you know, uh, guideline to follow in order to support that cause. They already know what the cause is. They already know in their heart what the proper way to move forward is. And so this movement becomes something that is fluid. It becomes something that isn't a rigid governmental structure like a lot of micronations have developed. It is an activist movement. And so there are plenty of activists that are great at that. Uh, and even in micronationalism, there are plenty of examples that you can look to as to how to start those movements. Again, the con to that is they are very fluid. They are things that are going to be developed and going to push forward specifically based around the idea that you need one simple premise and that's it. So if you're trying to develop a more large scale community, then you're looking at um, longevity versus speed. A lot of movements kick up a lot of dust, make a lot of noise, and do a lot in a very short period of time. However, their fights may continue on for decades and decades and decades, but the same movements, the same names of institutions may not stay with them as long. So you will have these big uproars of different groups of people, and then those different groups will wax and wane as the years go on. Whereas groups that are more traditionally micronations, groups that are uh, more government-based, more focused on creating small-scale local communities are doing something different. They're in it for the long haul. So they are very small groups. They are doing something that is very, uh, very slow to develop, something that is very costly on them, and that has a rigid structure. So not everybody can just join in and say, hey, I know exactly what attorney is. I'm going to push forward uh, and do a whole bunch of attorney stuff myself because there's specific government institutions and regulations that go about that. However, that being the case, there are still plenty of ways to become a part of a movement like that and still plenty of ways to develop yourself in that. And that's what we see more and more, especially in the Empire of Eternia, is we're seeing more and more people who are coming in and asking, hey, I want to be a part of Eternia. What do I do? How do I move forward? And so you have to have ways to be able to plan out your large scale objectives and start to move for those each and every day. It is not something that's easy. It is something that, again, as opposed to just purely an activist nation, is something that requires a lot of longevity, requires a lot of long-term dedication for your citizens. And so that being the case, you have to have this planned out and mapped out for the future. It's always going to change. It's always going to have some edits. But at the end of the day, the better that that can be explained to people and the better that that uh, potentially more rigid structure can be established, the more that you can actually get people to understand how they can start to move forward, to understand where they fit into this larger machinery, this larger uh, network of people. And so as you move forward, there's going to be different, uh, th this, this line between activism and, and government is going to be kind of blurred. It's not a cut and dry black or white thing. It's a spectrum. So there's going to be people uh, who are starting nations who are pure activists, who are saying, I really don't care about establishing a government that much. I really don't care about 
uh, you know, doing all of this. I'm an activist. I'm trying to move for some one specific activist goal. On the other hand, there are going to be people who are very, very strongly government and saying, no, I'm trying to establish a community and a government and this is what we're doing. Uh, and there are going to be plenty of people in the middle. So what you decide to do and how you decide to let people represent you and all of that will kind of determine where you are on this sliding scale. But as you keep moving forward, there are key things to remember, specifically if you do want to start a government, if you do want to kind of latch down and hunker down uh, and build a community of people that's going to last decades and decades and decades under that same specific name and under those same uh, guiding principles. Um, again, we've talked about constitutions on this channel. Constitutions are super important for helping to establish all those rules and setups and making edits to them as time goes on. But one of the other huge things that you can do as a micronationalist to get on track and to start growing and moving in that direction is to be able to connect with those people. So not only just having those people like in an activist nation come together, do the bare minimum, and then start off on their own journey to develop, but really having that game plan and being able to reach out to those individuals who are excited uh, for you and say, hey, I have designed in the plan a part for you. There is a specific role that I would like you to play. I'd like to learn more about you to see which role you should play, and so on and so forth. Being able to manage and kind of strategize in that way and work with the dynamic group of people that you have is going to allow you to better react to changes in your environment. Micronationalism and the world are constantly changing. There are things that are going to hinder you. There are things that are going to help you. And the way that you differentiate between those is how well you're able to adapt. So the adaption part of it is always going to come in with the people that you have and having them in the right spot. So you're making this well-rounded thing. You're making this thing that's diverse. You're making this thing that has the ability to change and adapt, yet is moving forward on the same constant goal. And it's trying to achieve these specific uh, steps in the plan that you've laid out. How does that help with activism? How does that change the world at all, AP? Well, that's a great question. The biggest, most important way that that does something for your nation is it allows people to move forward even without you. Just like in the activist sense, where you are really, really pushing toward this one great idea, if all of a sudden you had to stop, if all of a sudden your internet connection went out, there would still be other people who are actively talking about your thing. In a longer term, since if you died, there would still be people who could potentially connect to your nation and continue to establish that for the future. On the same hand, if you have developed and established your nation as a government entity, as a, uh, as a community, uh, more closely and, and developed that more accurately, even for that rigid institution, you can still achieve a lot and there is a lot of potential for growth. Um, when you have a, a group of people who all of a sudden lose their, their authority figure, or their, uh, their figurehead, uh, sometimes they fall apart really, really quickly. Even big organizations, even big governments, uh, macro governments, uh, can fall apart once their, you know, figurehead is toppled. And that's something that's really, really dangerous for micronations because micronations a lot of the time want to establish under a figurehead because it means that they know for certain there's going to be at least one person that is constantly on the grind working for their goals and interests. But if they aren't established correctly and if they aren't set up for the long term and they don't have people in line to do things ready to take on roles, then all of a sudden they could be in the situation where, oh, all of a sudden the main person is gone. What happens now? We kind of start falling apart. We kind of start transitioning to be something else or do something else. But if you really have things stuck down, if you really have people knowing their roles, knowing how they're going to develop, knowing what that future plan is right along with you, they can jump into place. It may not be perfect, there will be plenty of hiccups along the way, but those people still have the opportunity to take on the reins no matter what. And that's huge, because even if you're not gone, even if you're still there, having people being more independent and being able to uh, develop things on their own in your organization really, really allows you to feel comfortable that the changes that happen in the world, the changes that happen within your organization aren't going to be things that break it. It's not going to be the straw that broke the camel's back. It's going to be something that allows you to continue to push forward and say, well, this was a learning experience. We kind of tested our metal here. We know what we can handle and we can continue to move forward. So that is huge for me. That's something that attorney has been trying to learn for the longest time, but it is imperative to our ability to change the world. Being able to create roots in the ground and hold firm like an oak tree, yet be able to move in the wind 
uh, freely and clearly is something that is absolutely necessary for who we are as micronations. We're part activist, we're part uh, institution, and depending on what part of the sliding scale you are more or less on is going to depend on what you need to do to protect the future interests of your nation and make sure that those goals you have are able to be achieved. Uh, ooh, uh, Kosneria joined and said, sup, AP? What's up, Kosneria? How are you? Kingdom of Known said, yes. Reptiles said, good morning, AP. Sorry I haven't been around recently. That's all right. Thank you so much for joining, Reptiles. It means a ton. Iron says, what is your opinion on democratic uh, revolution or having one in Eternia? Uh, again, uh, I don't think Eternia is really going to ever have a democratic revolution, uh, specifically because a revolution isn't something that's really possible in Eternia, uh, as I own, you know, all of the property and assets. But I will say, eventually, Eternia might willingly and purposely transform transition into a more democratic style of government, especially after I pass. But that'll be something that is established and determined further down the line. Uh, you know, people can always enter and leave Eternia whenever they want, uh, but they would have to be something else. The rights to what Eternia is, uh, is held under my name and the same with all of its assets. So people can come and go as they please, but they can't necessarily change Eternia into anything else without my consent. AP said, do you think the Supreme Court will ever go over Roe v. Wade based off of the premise of change and progress as seeing the decision was a step backwards in my opinion? Vincent, that's a great question and I completely agree. I think that people are going to continue to push for it. That was one of the things I was talking about with that there are huge problems in the United States right now that people are very, very upset about, especially concerning things like Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade is something that has been around for, you know, uh, over 50 years uh, since, the, uh, since the 70s. And so that being the case, since like 1973, I believe, was when that court case happened uh, and was decided upon, I should say. So that being the case, people have been living in an entire generation of having that as a freely accessible right. Anywhere in the country, you could go and you could seek an abortion. That being the case, now it's something uh, that as soon as it happened, uh, like seven states had bans on it already. And you know how they did that? They had that based around previously existing laws. Again, uh, Alabama had a law that was set up in the 1950s to ban abortion here. And what they did was they just had that law in waiting. They already had the law on the books, written, established, and said, oh, well, we just can't enforce this because of Roe v. Wade. And then the second that Roe v. Wade was overturned, they said, now we can enforce it. Boom, it's up. The second that it, it happened, uh, you know, uh, abortion clinics had to uh, call their doctors, had to, uh, you know, uh, call their employees and say, we have to shut down operations entirely. We can't continue to host abortions. And that is absolutely horrible for people who were already in massive lines, who were already struggling and trying to figure out what to do, that they're now forced into a, a decision that they didn't want to, uh, uh, that they didn't want to, uh, uh, have to uh, have to make a loan anyway that they wanted the expertise and, and guidance of a uh, of a medical professional and now they can't seek that that's something that is absolutely horrible that those medical professionals could lose their license or be jailed uh, because of what they're trying to do so yes i definitely think that that can be overturned uh, i definitely think that people are going to continue to push for that around this country and i am definitely supportive of that uh thank you vincent for asking questions about that again it's, it's super super important uh, New England says, good evening, your Imperial Majesty. How are you? Uh, good morning, uh, New England. It's, I'm doing good. How are you? Uh, how's your afternoon there in Australia? Reptile says, hey, AP, if you ever get the chance to buy an island, would you take it? Um, it depends on the situation, I would say. So, um, a lot of islands are already owned. Uh, by other countries. So unless there was some real specific reason why we wanted an island as opposed to, you know, mainland territory, uh, it, it would really, really depend. I would say unless there's a beneficial reason, probably not. And I'll tell you why. People always want to buy islands as a way to develop a micronation because they think, oh, well, it's isolated, so it'll be defendable. Uh, we have helicopters, we have planes, we have drones, we have, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, plenty of ships and uh, aircraft and stuff. It, it, it's not something that once you get a private island, you'll be able to defend it against any uh, country. That's not the case at all. So if you're not looking at it for like defense purposes, what are you really looking at it for? Uh, for islands especially, because uh, your circumference, uh, you know, the, the part around the outer rim uh, is probably going to be beach, uh, a lot of your land will be uh, unusable for things like planting crops. 
Uh, some of it will be beneficial because you may be able to go out and fish and do things like that, but as well you're dealing with erosion, you're dealing with rising sea levels, you're dealing with potentially your value of your land because its area is decreasing, uh, also that value decreasing, and people being very skeptical to go and move there and live there. As well, you may have to have a ton of your resources shipped in from other places just in order to make ends meet. So buying an island really isn't a beneficial thing. If you were going to go all the way to that route, why would you not, you know, and you're trying to do it for like independence purposes. Oh, you may be able to buy the island and then, you know, from another country and then declare that independent or whatever. No, no, no. If you're going to do all of that, what you should be doing instead is trying to pursue seasteading or something similar where again, seasteading is a moonshot idea. It's a really, really big, you know, ambitious goal and something that nobody has really done fully successfully. But that being the case, if you could save up a ton of money, have, you know, large companies in the United States or in other countries, you know, global industries that are going to support that effort uh, and are specifically built around supporting that effort, you could funnel a ton of money into a project like that, build platforms offshore like, you know, oil companies already do. Again, billion dollar industry, groups that have millions of dollars to drop at the, at the drop of a hat. Uh, but you would get those things, build platforms off, offshore, and then have constant infrastructure uh, on the mainland that is supplying you with all the things you would need, like if you purchased a private island anyway. But that way you at very least get the thing that you're hoping to get with the private island, which is that uh, hard, more sincere claim to independence. That concept that this land that was built was never owned by anyone. This is brand new land and this is away from anybody else's uh, economic zone. This is away from anybody else's uh, borders. You know, you would build that specifically in the middle of nowhere, like in the middle of the ocean where nobody could claim that they ever owned it. So you would have some basic rights to self-determination. Um, that would still be difficult. You would still have to go through the UN. You would still have to deal with processes, but that would already be a proving ground for saying, hey, we already have these millions of dollars. Hey, we're already funding and funneling to this. Uh, so now let, we're just trying to do the final piece, which is officially declaring it a government. Uh, but that's again, a far flung moonshot idea, still something that is necessary and interesting for continuing to pursue micronationalism uh, in a way that would get you that sovereignty. So I would say, uh, buying an island really wouldn't be the, the best route to go, but is definitely an interesting one. Uh, Vincent said, Eternia will never be democratic. It's an absolute monarchy, so AP is the king. Uh, as of democratic revolutions, they can be either an easy transition of the people wanted or a difficult one if it's forced. Uh, ooh, I would say uh, I'm not a king at all. I'm an emperor. Uh, I, I feel like king is like a very specific title, uh, and I'm just not a king. It's just not accurate. Uh, but I do appreciate it, Vincent. Um, uh, I'm an emperor, and the uh, again, I, I don't think a democratic revolution would ever happen. It's not something that would be violent or anything at all. It just can't. Like even if you know you're like, oh, get the get the emperor's head or whatever, and you did that, uh, people would just go to jail. Who did that? And then you know things would just continue based on whoever I had appointed as my heir anyway. But people wouldn't know who that is. Like uh, that's one of the things I've talked about in attorney. Uh, in Eternian uh, declarations and in describing more about our government. Something that I in fact want to put into our guided foundation and principles in its second iteration uh, is that uh, I will write a will, a living will, that has my uh, up-to-date heir in it. But nobody will know who that is. I will be the only one who's modifying and updating that living will. So nobody will really have any concrete or direct evidence as to who is supposed to be that, that actual final heir. Uh, that being the case, uh, if you did decide to kill me or if something happened to me, um, it, it wouldn't be something that someone could plan to like put in a coup or like put in a new way to get up there. Uh, it would be something that's pre-established and planned uh, uh, without without knowledge of, of other people. Um, uh, Kingdom of Isbania says, ultimate authoritarian right move. Uh, and then uh, Vincent said, hmm? And then Isbania said, uh, political compass joke. Uh, Vincent said, also interesting flag, Isbania. Hey, very cool. Everybody's joining. Uh, Muhammad's in here. Hey, Muhammad, it's good to see you. Muhammad says, Salam alaikum. Uh, Salam alaikum, Muhammad. Uh, how are you? What are you up to? Uh, Isbania says, I might go into detail on that later. Please do. Uh, Raz says, hi, Muhammad and people. Uh, hey, Raz, it's good to see you. Uh, thank you for joining us and thank you for liking the video. It means a lot. Um, Vincent said, uh, morning, Muhammad. Hi, Raz. Uh, Muhammad said, I didn't sleep last night. Muhammad, I'm sorry to hear that. What happened? Uh, talk to us. I know uh, Muhammad, if you guys don't know, is actively in Afghanistan, in Panjshir province, his home province, 
fighting back against the Taliban. There is an active ongoing revolution against the Taliban. Uh, this resistance has been going on since uh, before the United States left Afghanistan and even through the United States leaving Afghanistan. It's just not covered by the media very much anymore. So uh, we definitely want to hear uh, Muhammad out and see what's going on. Um, Raspberry says, it isn't afternoon here. Uh, isn't it afternoon here? Uh, Muhammad says it is. Uh, Vincent said, were you on guard detail, Muhammad? Uh, Muhammad said, I didn't sleep because I guarded some family. Uh, yes, by my own will. Oh, goodness. Uh, well, I'm glad to hear that you were uh, trying to protect people and trying to help people as much as you could. Uh, I'm sorry that things are so difficult and that it's such a rough situation with you. Again, we've been trying to keep up with Muhammad's story as much as possible, and we're trying to put out a video uh, when we can about uh, Muhammad's story. Um, just from edits of these live streams that we've been spending time with him on. Vince says, all right, how's the Northern Alliance doing? Raz says, I'm going to the beach soon. Hey, congrats, Raz. Reptile says, hey, Raz, how are you doing? Is your country still good? Muhammad said, it's doing fine. I don't know how the situation is in other provinces. Uh, I know you were talking to us about a warlord who was, like, fighting back and that there was, you know, a whole bunch of stuff going on there. Do you have any news or updates about that? Raz says, I'm okay, country is still in inactivity. Uh, Raz, why is that? Uh, tell me a little bit about it. Fake name says, I'll be leaving soon. Either my phone dies or time to leave to go to the lake. Ah, makes sense. Uh, well, still, I'm really supportive of you uh, hanging out with us, fake name. It means a lot. Thank you for supporting us. Uh, and once again, I, I hope these streams teach something. I hope they tell you a little bit about, you know, the activist nature behind micronationalism and what it means to be a micronationalist. It means a lot. Vincent said, well, uh, is your province doing all right since the large assault? Yes, uh, Vincent, that is a great question. Mohammed says, been in Panjshir, we're doing good. That's great. Uh, Raz says, I wish the other provinces were as lucky as you, Mohammed. Agreed. Uh, Mohammed said, we're slowly rebuilding. Absolutely. That's wonderful. So uh, they have not broken your spirit and you're able to uh, continue to uh, resist and fight back. That is, that is wonderful, Mohammed. Vincent said, that's good. Reptile says, good to hear, Mohammed. Raz says, I hope a new government comes into order after this one is over. Vincent said, are you fixing infrastructure uh, and stuff? Mohammed said, monsters kill more people. Uh, we have no place to bury them. I'm sorry, Mohammed. That's, that's awful. Um, how far out from your um, province can you go in order to do that? Like, is there a way outside of your town, potentially, to, uh, to, to bury them? You know, is there a place maybe in the mountains to do so? Uh, Noam says, smart, finding ways for citizens to have actions that can get them more involved. Absolutely, Noam. Uh, that is a very, very important part of micronationalism. That's something that I've been continuously trying to do, uh, but it's something that's a lot easier said than done, of course. So, uh, again, as Eternia continues to grow and develop, we're trying to do more and more locally, but of course, uh, there's plenty that we still have to do online. There's still plenty that, you know, we're actively trying to get just from our citizens to help understand who they are and what it is that they want to do. Uh, that's a huge part of developing our community, and it's something that allows us to help people to move toward the life that they want to live. People seek to support micronations because they see it as an opportunity for them to get the life that they want, to see the change that they hope for in the world. And so if we can facilitate that in some way, if we can help in some way to make that an achievement for them, then everything works so much more smoothly. But if we're just moving along with things and having citizens jump in and out because they don't really feel like they're getting what they wanted out of it, then it becomes a struggle because we're trying to figure out why our nation is waxing and waning so much. Uh, and that's something that we talk about as well in our uh, The Cure for Sick Micronations video, uh, where we're talking about, you know, micronations who go in decline, and who feel like they're struggling and kind of what symptoms of that may be and, and potentially how to resolve it. And a lot of that is community interaction and really, really knowing your people. Raz is a stronger government who will not, uh, who will be loyal to the people and not betray them. Absolutely. Uh, Muhammad said, yes, we're fixing infrastructure. I'm glad to hear that, Muhammad. Raz says, infrastructure is what? Buildings? Yes, buildings, you know, electricity, um, um, you know, uh, water sources, things like that. Uh, cars, absolutely. Vincent says, I'm not sure what the Quran says about the dead, but could you cremate the bodies? Muhammad said, our bases and cars, uh, and homes, of course. Uh, Vincent said, yes. Uh, Vincent said, infrastructure, stuff like hospitals, roads, homes. Muhammad said, uh, cremating is... Ha uh, Haram, prohibited, so not possible. Makes sense. Uh, Vincent said, all right. Uh, Raz says, oh, so things for people. Yes, uh, that, that's a great way to describe it, uh, Raz. Vincent says, so you have to bury them individually. Muhammad says, uh, we're burying them in mass graves. Oh my goodness, Muhammad. That's, oh, that's, that's rough to hear about. I'm sorry. Um, I, I know everybody who is losing somebody, everybody who's dealing with that, I'm sure is, is absolutely, you know, 
just distraught over it is is freaking out because you you imagine seeing you know not wanting to ever have to bury a family member or a friend but if you do have to uh seeing that person's body you know uh taken care with you know uh time dedicated specifically for them feeling as though it's in a rush and having to, to put everything together uh to you know quickly bury these people and, and kind of move on it's a necessary fact of life it seems especially dealing with the war that you're in but it also seems like um uh, something that would would be very painful to watch personally so i'm sorry to hear that you're having to go through that um muhammad says if the family agrees of course uh we're putting some stones that's good vincent says i know at least in my family oh because uh vincent asked are you at least putting markers uh vincent said i know at least in my family we don't walk over where the dead rest out of respect uh absolutely Muhammad said the smell, uh, the smell is incredibly gross. I imagine, Muhammad. I'm sorry to hear that. That's, that's really rough. Um, let's continue. Noam says, uh, you are on your way to reaching the publicity and notoriety of Malasi and Sealand. Your passion for this is epic. Thank you, Kingdom of Gnome. I appreciate that. And that's the hope. Uh, again, if you want to collaborate at some point, let me know. Uh, I'm trying to get bigger and better on TikTok. But at the same time, uh, I, I really, really want to... Uh, want to try and achieve that simply because it's it's a struggle you know uh, trying to uh, trying to build something that is long lasting that is well meaning and that ultimately ends up helping people and doing good for people is the end goal that's what we have to achieve as Eternians uh, we're of course trying to develop our own culture we're of course trying to be unique and fun and, and creative but on top of all of that at the end of the day we really just want to be able to build the home that we have we really just want to be able to show other people that this is possible and be able to make sincere change in the world i have seen again throughout my life people struggle in the u.s in the richest country in the world with poverty with you know not being able to get a meal to eat with you know uh, kids that i knew at school uh their only meal being at school uh, it, it's, it's so rough and it's so sad. And again, all of this comes from a place of privilege being in the United States because hearing people like Muhammad's story, it could be a million times worse. But at the same time, it's still ridiculous that though we have all of this infrastructure, though we have all of this ability to help our people, we don't. Uh, in Muhammad's case, it is a situation where people are actively trying to fight back against a tyrannical regime. It's a situation where people are actively trying to build lives and homes and infrastructures for them that had been destroyed by war over decades. Here, we don't have that problem. Here, we have every opportunity to make a better life for our people, and we choose not to. It's out of greed. It's out of selfishness. It's out of purposeful harm to keep the system that we have running the way that it is and i'm not saying there needs to be crazy vast sweeping change instantly but i am saying that if the government and if other institutions aren't going to step up to make the necessary changes that people need in their lives that we some groups some organizations that represent people need to come together to do that and so we as micronations who claim to want to be better nations who claim to want to be you know these big organizations and community projects need to come together to do that and so that's what i'm hoping for i want to build a group of people who can live sustainably who can have you know zero rent that they pay who can be able to show that that type of model works and that it works better than the model that we actively have i want to enrich those people i want to help them and not enrich saying everybody in attorney is going to be a millionaire or a billionaire but saying that everybody in attorney is going to live comfortably that they're going to have the things that they need and that they're going to know that their children are going to be perfectly fine growing up in that society that their children are going to lead better lives than them more financially beneficial lives in them and that they're going to be able to go and pursue the passions that they want instead of just suffering under whatever it is that they can take because they feel like that's all they have left to hope for is some way to get by and survive um, in the united states historically um this generation and the, my generation the generation a little bit before me are doing worse than their parents generation they're doing worse than the baby boomers they're doing worse than um the uh you know uh the uh, gen, oh goodness, what is it, uh, Gen X or whatever, uh, it, we're, we're declining. The economic situation is worse. The social situation is worse. Uh, the, the political environment is worse. Everything feels like a larger and larger struggle for the vast majority of Americans. There are some people who are doing very, very well for themselves. 
and they're doing it on the backs of everyone else. So I feel like there has to be some change, there has to be some way to make a difference, and one that is going to be long-lasting in this nation. And again, even if you disagree with me politically, even if you say, I don't think that, you know, uh, raising taxes on the rich or uh, doing, uh, you know, creating uh, more public assistance is the way to fix that. You don't have to. Go about it your own way. Support, uh, you know, whoever you want to support, whether that's the U.S. government, uh, which, again, I, I support as well. I'm, you know, uh, really lucky to be in the United States and live in the place that I am. But I also see all the injustices that are happening, and I know that if I can't make a difference uh, in, in that system, if I, you know, if my vote isn't going to actually change that, then I'm going to go out of my way throughout my life to make that change for a smaller group of people, people that I know I can actually make that difference for. And I'm going to build a community that is is a little bit more impervious to those ups and downs of our markets, to those struggles that are happening that the U.S. doesn't seem to fix and that the state of Alabama doesn't seem to fix. So that being the case, I want to continue to push forward for myself and for the attorney and people. And I feel like that is the only way for us to continue to get better and continue to show that micronationalism is a legitimate way to do it, is a legitimate way to improve people's lives, and is something that people can hope for and achieve as another form of activism uh, and as another form of uh, political action. Let's see. Uh, Vincent says, I bet. Muhammad said, I have puked three times when burying them. Oh my goodness, Muhammad. I'm, I'm sorry. That... You, Reading that, like, at the same time, I, it, smiling is not appropriate, but it, when, I'm, when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I, I tend to smile. Um, it, feeling that, like, I, like, it hit my stomach. I, I felt when you said I puked three times. Like, it, it's in my throat right now. Goodness. Vincent says, do you wear a mask or face rags to make the stench manageable? Muhammad said, nothing. Uh, we have no masks. I'm sorry to hear, Muhammad. Vincent says, do you guys get COVID at all? I'm sure they do, uh, uh, Vincent. Muhammad was talking about how the Taliban government claims that there are no cases of COVID, but that at the local hospital that he went to, there are plenty of uh, COVID cases. Fake name says, a figurehead is meant to be an honorary leader and not do much, so I'm confused at what you mean when you say a figurehead is doing the grind. Um, uh, Figurehead, I think is, uh, you're right, is, is probably a term that more so means just the face, but not actually the body, not actually doing things. A lot of the time that is synonymous, though, in micronationalism, like the, I guess I mean the head of state, the, you know, uh, the, the person who is in charge, a lot of the time is also the figurehead. Uh, the, you know, the person who is running the government a lot of the time is also the face of the country. When you think about different micronations, like Malasia, you think about Kevin Baugh. When you think of Sealand, you think of Patty Roy Bates. Uh, when you think of, uh, you know, um, when you think of, uh, oh goodness, um, Atlantium, you think of, uh, oh goodness, President, oh gosh, I'm going to forget his name right now. There are plenty of uh, micronations that uh, you can see that their leadership directly influences who they are. When you think of West Antarctica, you think of, uh, um, oh, I, I know his name because I just, I just sent them a message like a last month or something. Oh, goodness. There, there are plenty of micronations whose leadership, whose figurehead in that sense of just the face of social media, just the, you know, the person that everybody identifies the nation with is the same as the person who's doing a lot of the work. And so when I say figurehead, that's what I mean. I mean that person who in, in strict definition means is just the figurehead and doesn't really do a ton. But in micronationalism, that almost becomes one and the same. The amount that the nation develops a lot of the time depends on how much that figurehead is putting into it. Not meaning that they're not doing anything, but meaning that they are the embodiment, you know, the human form of that nation. Uh, and a lot of the time, sometimes it can be that they're not doing a lot or that they're doing a ton and that that, you know, determines the success of that nation. Vincent says, uh, is it like an issue there? Uh, Muhammad said, Pangir has no COVID cases, but in K Kabul there is. Vincent said, that's great. Uh, I don't know, though. It, I don't know a ton about the, the geography and the landscape of Afghanistan, but I imagine that if there are people in, in other places getting it, the good news is because they're so separated and because it's difficult to travel, that, uh, you know, there may be some isolation that's given, but at the same time, 
if there are active COVID cases, that means that it may only take one, you know, to, to get across when they're getting a food supply or when they're getting an oil supply or something like that. Somebody who has COVID to infect their entire village and then they may not be able to get medical treatment. Um, then it says, are people doing anything to prevent the spread or is that difficult? Uh, I imagine it is very difficult. Raz says, the rotting corpses can be harmful to any food and water source. Do you bury them far away from storage? Muhammad says, uh, doctors have no masks and gloves. How do you expect for healthcare to be stable? That's reasonable. Fake Name says, gotta go see it. Thank you, Fake Name, for joining us. Uh, have fun at the lake. Uh, Muhammad says, we're burying them away from our reserves. I think that's smart, Muhammad, but I am so sorry that you're having to, you know, strategize logistics uh, when, when having to deal with such a horrible humanitarian disaster, when having to bury your friends and family, thinking about, you know, oh, are we planning to burying them too close to our water supplies to hurt more people? Uh, it's necessary, but it's, it, it, feels, it feels rough to think about. Vincent says, sounds like humanitarian aid is needed, honestly. Absolutely. Raz said bye to fake name. Uh, Muhammad said, see a fake name. Uh, everybody's saying bye, fake name. Muhammad said, yes, we need it. Yeah, of course. Of course they need humanitarian aid. They need anything they can get. Uh, and so I definitely encourage people uh, to tell their, their government, their local government, their federal government, whatever it is, support Afghanistan. Send aid. Uh, they need it. The people need it. Um, you know. Uh, reach out to people who have friends and family there and, you know, try to see what you can do. Uh, Olaf says, greetings. Uh, greetings, Olaf. It's good to see you. Uh, Muhammad says, because Monster's uh, government is incapable of doing uh, anything. Absolutely. Raz says, hello. Vincent said, how come the UN isn't sending any humanitarian aid to cities? It seems like they aren't doing what they're meant for. Because the Taliban will take it. Uh, you know, Muhammad talked to us about this the other day where, uh, you know, the, the Taliban controls the country officially. So it's a situation where uh, anybody who sends humanitarian aid, it's going to be stopped and, and trafficked by the Taliban first. They're going to take it, they're going to use it for what they want, and then some people who they want to get it may get it, but most people will not. So sending humanitarian aid to Afghanistan right now may be actually inadvertently fueling the regime that people are fighting against. Um, Raz says, that's what I asked Vincent. Vincent said, Muhammad, has no one reached out to the United Nations to send aid to civilians? Uh, who would, though? Like, that's the thing. If you're, Vincent, if you're under a despotic regime, you know, if you're under a tyrannical uh, ruler, and they're blocking your communications, and they're, you know, uh, stopping you from, from doing a lot, how would you successfully reach out? And even if you did, how would the United Nations know who you are or how to do that? Like, it'd be kind of like if somebody, like, you know, uh, called the cops, right, for something happening, but they didn't tell the cops where they lived, and the cops couldn't track them, and they didn't tell the cops any information. They just said, I need help in Alabama or whatever. And then the cops are like, okay, yeah, we're in Alabama, but where, where do we send it to? And then, you know, they, they call the government of Alabama and they say, hey, somebody said they need help. And the government of Alabama goes, no, everything's fine. No, we're good. No. And it's like, okay, do you need us to send you aid? Sure, yeah, send us aid. We'll, we'll take care of it. Not a problem. Uh, even though, you know, uh, the, the Taliban are just going to take that. That would be really it, uh, awful. Raz says, the UN is well aware of what's happening there. Absolutely. Muhammad said, nobody. Raz says, especially the US. They have hundreds of satellites with even infrared vision. They know. Absolutely. Muhammad says, the terrorists are so greedy that they will take one uh, pool Afghan sent from you. Absolutely. Vincent says, AP, I got an idea. What if we send the United Nations a letter to send humanitarian aid to Afghanistan, civilian populace, with evidence from Muhammad? Um, I think, again, that's, it's just not super strong. Like, again, we can do it, but there's plenty of more uh, more developed evidence. There are, you know, uh, there are active... Um, it's not that that may not be beneficial, but there are active, like, reporting that goes on in Afghanistan. Like, reporters sneak into Afghanistan and film stuff and sneak out. Uh, there are people who, you know, are in the inside of Afghanistan who send reporters, like documented footage of like uh awful things that happen it's not that people don't know that it's happening uh like raz was saying uh it's uh it's just that they're you know they can't do anything like it's again the main leadership of afghanistan 
are the people who are terrorizing Afghanistan. So if anyone tries to go into Afghanistan, they're going to face that government directly. Any aid, anything that's sent, can't get around the Taliban because the Taliban is everywhere. They're just going to take it. They're just going to take it. Like, it's not It's not like a, oh, maybe you might be able to sneak it in this way. They'll take it. And anybody that they find smuggling things, they'll arrest and potentially kill. So it's just not, you know, a lot of external sources feel like it's not worth it unless the Taliban falls apart. Because uh, you'll end up fueling the Taliban. Uh, it's a good idea, but I think it would be difficult to do. And I don't think it would result in much change. I think the biggest thing that we can do is continue to get the story out and continue to say, hey, everybody needs to see this and needs to, you know, constantly be made aware of what's happening and reminded uh, that there's larger things at stake. Um, Raz says it would be nothing, uh, dismissed and not even discussed in a meeting. Agreed. Muhammad says, uh, the, they won't. Uh, the says, uh, Vincent says, if not enough people speak about it. Not if enough people speak about it. Agreed, but that's why you have to make social media posts about it and do stuff like that so that you get a general public interested instead of just sending a letter. Mohammed says you need international pressure for that. You think someone is going to care that some desert and people in it about some desert and people in it? Agreed. Um, Mohammed, I'm sorry to that you feel that that situation is so dire, but I definitely understand why and I, I definitely agree. It, it's, it's brutal. Uh, people really do not care, and it, it's it's a shame. Then it says, although uh, I do wish we have some sort of help for Americans as well, it's getting rough. Absolutely. Uh, Raz says, Ukraine is of more importance to the UN. I'll tell you why. It is because the U.S. has had a bad relations with Afghanistan. The UN remembers, UN members don't want the U.S. to find them a threat. 100%. Absolutely. Well, and also the fact that, again, if you, if you send aid and it's taken by, uh, it's taken by, um, the Taliban, it would look at like a huge foreign relations blunder because then other countries would argue, oh, while well, we're doing real things to help, you know, uh, other countries, uh, your aid keeps getting taken by the Taliban. Your country's fueling the Taliban, you know. Uh, it, it would be a political nightmare for those uh, countries. Uh, ooh, uh, the Vincent said housing market is just uh, getting more expensive. Absolutely. Uh, and that's why in Eternia, we are hoping to offer free housing to Eternian residents. Goddess of Lesbians joined us. Hey, Goddess of Lesbians, it's good to see you. Thank you for hanging out with us. And if you haven't subscribed, please, uh, please subscribe for us. Uh, Goddess of Lesbians says, Full Salt could join the chat. Shoot, I'm not in the Full Salt account. That's all right. I appreciate you being the Goddess of Lesbians. That's, that's crazy. I didn't know there was a whole goddess for the, uh, the L in LGBTQ. That, that was awesome. QA plus. Uh, I, I'm glad, I'm glad that, uh, you're here, uh, to represent on behalf of all lesbians. Also, uh, it's good to see, uh, Full Sock that you're in here. Uh, if you can, please subscribe. If you can, please subscribe with both accounts, because it would help us. Uh, Joking Gamer says, haha, Raz says, lol. Vince said, welcome to the stream. Raz says, biggest fails on stream. Uh, not at all. I think his biggest successes on the stream. We got, uh, deities joining the chat. Muhammad said, warlord nothing. I don't have any info. Uh, I'm sorry to hear, Muhammad. Uh, Fullsock says, now Fullsock has officially joined the chat. Uh, thank you, Fullsock, for joining us. Uh, and again, uh, if you can, please like the video because it helps to spread out to a larger audience. And please subscribe because it helps us to, uh, get bigger and better. Uh, Raz says, hi. Muhammad says, why, quote, goddess of lesbians? And then puts the, like, ah, thing. Uh, that's funny. Uh, Fullsock says, hello there. Uh, Vincent said, welcome to the stream. Uh... Full Socks is a nickname I was given by my girlfriend. Lesbian intensifies. Lesbian. <laughs> I, I appreciate that, certainly. Uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you for being proud of who you are. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad to see that. Um, as well, uh, happy, happy Pride Month. No, 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 no. Uh, we haven't really talked about it in Eternia, but uh, it's something important, and I, I'm glad you're here. Um, Raz says it's okay. Okay, Raz says I don't think we'll judge. Uh, Muhammad said I'm not judging. Why did everybody get a judge? It's a weird passive thing. I'm not judging. I'm the least judgy. It's not me judging. Other people might judge the. I'm not judgy at all. I, I appreciate you guys being here uh, and hanging out. Uh, th this chat is pretty cool. Uh, Full Sock says, thank you. Uh, I had forgotten to switch to the Full Sock account. Um, uh, UASR says, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, USF 
United Soviets of Full Sock says, my stream delay is long, lol. That makes sense. Also, at the same time, uh, it's not just you. I'm slow in reading the chat sometimes. This is said, all good. AP's catching up right now. That is true. Liam says, first time participating in the chat. Good to see everyone. Liam, thank you for joining us. Uh, again, if you haven't subscribed, Liam, or if you haven't liked this video, I see you straight through your camera. You better do it. We need it, Liam. Also, I appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Um, again, we're trying to grow Eternia. We're trying to continue to develop. And every time you guys hang out, even just for a few minutes in the chat, it really does help us to keep growing. Uh, and it also helps our community to know you a little bit better. A lot of you are creating micronations. A lot of you are trying your best to, you know, enter foreign relations or learn how to do certain things or figure things out. And sure, I can help to some extent, but I'm on the other side of this camera. Uh, I can DM you and message you on our Discord and uh, on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. But at the same time, sometimes you just want a group of people to talk to and get kind of a community opinion. And the chat is a great place to do that because people are happy to talk to you about it uh, and to support your nation. People will actively inquire about your nation if they know about you. Uh, you know, like people hitting up and being like, hey, I like your flag. Like, what's been going on with this and that in your nation? Uh, Vincent says, hello. Raz says, 10 viewers and 7 likes. Now we're up to 9 viewers, 13 likes. Uh, Raz says, stats are better than me. Uh, and then Raz says, hello. Uh, Full Sox says, hi. Huntia joined us and said, sup. What's up, Huntia? It's good to see you. Thank you for hanging out. Everybody said, hey, Muhammad said, you misunderstood, AP. That is information I got from Ka uh, Kabul. Panshir has no cases. Uh, yes, sir. I, I understand. Uh, you said Kabul has cases. Panshir has no cases. I got you. Um... Uh, Full Sox says, oh, everyone has the same stream delay? Uh, it's not, it's not a delay. It's me literally just taking time to read comments. I'm on, uh, 9.57 and it's 10.10 right now. So it's, I'm like 10 minutes behind. Raz says, we type too fast. Uh, I'm trying to read everything, but it's difficult. Gnome says, West Arctic is ran by Grand Duke Travis McHenry. Thank you. Full Sox says, I have another leader figurehead example. If you think of Full Sox, you think, uh, Ayan Martinez. Uh, absolutely. Is that how I, is that how I spell? Uh, is that how I pronounce? It, uh, Ayan, uh, Martinez, is that correct? Uh, also, uh, I appreciate having the goddess of lesbians, Ayan Martinez, here. Um, Raz said, figurehead, uh, Full Sox says, English, shaking my head, lol. Raz says, what is that? Uh, Muhammad, uh, Joking Gamer said, Muhammad, is there anything people outside can do? Uh, Torrance says, AP, we are the alternative. We are the third alignment as we go into glo global chaos. That sounds like some, an interesting phrasing. Uh, Muhammad says, talk about the situation. Torrance, did you listen to those songs? Uh, Torrance said, Miss Ivy doesn't care. Raz says, the curse song. Uh, Torrance said, Muhammad, send them again. And then he did. Uh, Muhammad says, I understood that a long time ago in 1994. Absolutely. Vincent said, but what if they had a Peace Corps handing out, handed out instead of the government? It sounds like the same issue with North Korea. Um, I don't think the Taliban would let a Peace Corps in. Like, I just don't think they would. The Taliban's position is, everything is fine here. Everybody stop worrying. Get out of our country. So it's a thing where if you tried to go in, no matter who you are, they'd be like, you're a foreigner. We don't want you here. Get out. And they would try to, like, attack you or hurt you or throw you in jail or find an excuse to attack you and hurt you and throw you in jail. Unless you're there to specifically support the Taliban, they really don't want you and they don't really care about why you're there. If you have something that you're trying to bring in, they'll say you're smuggling things into our country, you're trying to help rebels, and we're going to, you know, take you over. Even if you're 100% a peaceful group. They're not really concerned about, you know, uh, being the most humanitarian or being the most, uh, you know, uh, politically forward thinking that's that's not their interest um terence says i found uh the muhammad why are they cursed muhammad said they aren't cursed at all just listen to them raz says on the oh the korean war Torrance says ap did attorney recognize the 2020 u.s presidential election uh the election of joe biden yes yes we did recognize it 100 percent uh we believe that it was a legitimate election uh, and it, it was. Raz says, just don't take control of the nation, send fluid supplies and money to Ukraine. I also think the, you know, uh, presidential election of Donald Trump was a legitimate election. I don't like the results of it, uh, but I'm not going to say, oh, it was a fake election. It didn't work. Uh, it, it was, it was legitimate. Uh, people voted that guy in. Muhammad says, if that help means another invasion, no, please. Absolutely. Vincent says, no, any food that is sent to North Korea is taken by the government and not distributed. Absolutely. Uh, Torrance says, I will, Muhammad, have added to a playlist. Raz says, at the beach, go, uh, oh, I'm, I'm going to the beach, gotta go. Good to see you, Raz, thank you for hanging out. Uh, everybody said, see ya. Uh, Vince said, uh, Vince said, Torrance, how's your passion project? Uh, Full Sox said, Muhammad, uh, and then said, Muhammad? 
Uh, and then said, Icelandic keyboard. Muhammad said, for me, June is month when my dad was beheaded. I miss him so much. Oh my goodness, Muhammad, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, absolutely. I would imagine you miss him every day. Um, uh, I, I can definitely understand. Uh, my mother passed in December uh, of 2018. So I, I think about her, you know, every December, actually right around Christmas. So it's, uh, it's, it's quite a difficult time for me. Um, I, I can definitely understand how certain months get to you. Uh, USR says, I'm sorry for that, Muhammad. Vincent said, do you have to, anything to remember? Uh, him, Muhammad said, 23 years ago he passed. Full Sox says, AP, you're sticking your face in the camera and making a threat was horrifying. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Full Sox. That's, that's how I intimidate people. That's how, you know, when attorney, you got some beef with somebody, I just, I just get right up in there. You know, you know, it's, it's a great deterrent. Uh, that's how you, that's how you flex your, your authority. King, uh, uh, Torrance said, what's up, Vincent? I announced the first citizenship drive will be in July, the specific date to be determined. Uh, Full Sox said, horrifying. Vincent said, that's great. Gamer says, sorry for your loss, Muhammad. Absolutely. Muhammad said, we go to his grave and leave some food and always bring Northern Alliance flag. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure he would be very, very proud of you uh, and excited to see the progress that you're making for people that otherwise would not have nearly as much hope. Vincent said, is that a tradition you do? Muhammad said, yes, but uh, bringing the flag isn't, but food is. Uh, Full Sox says, no, lol. Uh, Ayana, uh, Ayana, got you. Uh, well, it's good to see you, Ayana. Thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, Vincent said, what does the Quran say about the dead? I'm interested to learn more about Islam, honestly. Uh, Talsanistan, uh, Tal joined and said, hey, AP, I finally got the chance to tune into one of your streams. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, Talsanistan. Uh, I appreciate you hanging out and I appreciate you subscribing and learning more about our nation. Again, if you could like the video, it helps a lot. Uh, to blow it up and get more people in the stream like yourself who are new to it. Uh, and I hope you can comment and like tell us more about your nation uh, and engage with some more of the people who are in here. Uh, again, we're talking about micro-national development. We're talking about how nations can get bigger and better uh, and more connected with each other. So the more that you're here, the more that you hang out, the more that it helps us to keep growing. Muhammad says, when you're buried, angels come to you and ask you three questions. Who's your Lord? Who's your prophet? And what is your religion? If you answer correctly, you had more good uh, and you had more good than bad deeds. If you uh, you go to paradise, if you uh, paradise, if you don't, you go to hell. Uh, and so what's paradise described as? Liam says not as intimidating as you think. Uh, uh, Full Sox says I love this guy. It's her dia. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, we love you too, uh, Ayana. Uh, I I appreciate you. Uh, Full Sox says close enough to pronunciation. Lol. Uh, I guess you'll learn if we ever do diplomatic relations. I would love that 100%. Uh, also, if you're close enough to us, that would be like great. <laughs> Uh, but even if not, uh, I would 100% uh, love to develop diplomatic relations with you. If you have uh, Discord, definitely join our Discord channel uh, and DM us. Uh, you know, uh, I can I can talk to you more about it personally there. If not, uh, our email is another great way to reach us, eternianempire at gmail.com. That's A-E-T-E-R-N-I-A-N-E-M-P-I-R-E at gmail.com. Um... Um, Muhammad says you will be 30 meters high you will have anything you want you will have your own palace you can meet any prophet you want Muhammad, Isa, Musa, any prophet Vincent said very interesting Full, uh, Full Sox said Full Sox is all over the place uh, and said I'm already in the discord hey thank you very much uh, that's awesome uh, again please DM us and we can talk more about it uh, Telsania says uh, very interesting Muhammad Muhammad said uh, that is how big Adam uh, alaikum salam was, uh, hey, that's, that's insane, uh, that, that's awesome, um, so, mm -hmm, that's interesting, uh, learning more, learning more about other religions and other cultures, um, huh, you think that causes spinal issues, like, is it proportional, or is it, like, you're 30 feet tall, or 30 meters tall, uh, 30 meters would be very, very tall, 30 meters tall, uh, so just a giant, you know what I mean? Like 30 meters tall, you're like up there and you're, you know, oh goodness, uh, oh goodness, 30 meters tall, that's got to cause some back issues. I'm sure in paradise it, it doesn't, but, uh, because, you know, you would be, you'd be in perfect condition, but, uh, I, I would still imagine, uh, if someone was 30 meters tall on earth, they'd be like, ah, oh no, oh goodness, uh, they'd be, they'd be broken. Um, um, 
Vincent says, do you guys still do Ramadan? Uh, Muhammad says, no, it finished two months ago. I fasted and fought. Uh, that's that's rough. Uh, I mean, it's it's good that you're respecting your traditions and your religion. Uh, but at the same time, that sounds very difficult. Um, I, I would imagine, you know, being weak and fighting, uh, it, it would never be easy. Uh, but I would imagine if the fighters that you're fighting against are also people who are fasting uh, and, and observing Ramadan, it, it may make it... Uh, a little bit easier uh but still fighting ever doing any manual labor or anything while you're hungry is is awful liam says i thought ramadan ended early uh, already this year uh liam you're correct vincent says it happens every year yes absolutely um i appreciate everybody in the chat hanging out uh muhammad says real muslims uh in in parentheses uh yeah absolutely um i oh goodness i huh so I wonder, that being the case, uh, do you feel like uh, the Taliban is in a situation where they, uh, they're they falling apart? Like, it, it seems to be that if you were to try to oppress lots of different people from lots of different ethnic backgrounds, and lots of different regions, that there would be no real way to consistently control those people and like you said there are regions that are fighting back but do you think their control is getting stronger or weaker uh Talsania says uh, it has its annual to liam uh talking about ramadan absolutely uh thank you uh full sock for for dming me uh it means a lot and i'm excited to talk more um goodness i just i I hear us talking about all these really rough things, and I hear us describing how, you know, awful the situation is in, of course, Taliban-controlled Afghanistan, but also all around the world. And I just, I know that in micronationalism, there is a way forward, you know, trying to develop groups of people who can, can build things for themselves, who can design a way forward, who can promote uh, their ideas and can, you know, really, really help to make change is something that is... Um, on everyone's mind constantly, I think. Um, you know, even if you're not a micronationalist, the, the the hope of, I wish I woke up tomorrow and the world was better. I wish I woke up tomorrow and, uh, you know, people were uh, happy and they were able to pursue the things that I want. I, I wish tomorrow I didn't have to wake up and uh, do some, like, job that I don't like uh, or, you know, uh, fight in, you know, someone else's war or, you know, to struggle in... Uh, you know, poverty and, and struggling to try and find something to eat or somewhere to sleep. Uh, hoping for a better life is a part of the human condition. And I don't think that's ever going to change. Even if things are wonderful, people are always going to have hopes and dreams that are bigger and better than their reality. But at the same time, we have to try to think about what we can do today, especially for those uh, goals that seem to be difficult but 100% attainable. Things like providing food for people, things like providing housing for people, that regardless of what your political opinion is, regardless of what your uh, you know, economic opinion is, it helps. If you have people who are well-fed and housed and clothed and taken care of, uh, people who are in peace, then you can uh, create a society of people who are more willing to learn and to be educated, people who are more willing to pursue projects, uh, to pursue their passions, people who feel they can more easily take care of their families, so that's less of a stress on their life, and they can be more productive members of society and more engaged in their society. So things like voting uh, has more of an effect and impact on people. So things like political office uh, are more accessible to more people. So things like uh, you know, uh, charity work and, you know, uh, access to uh, volunteering is something that is more accessible to people because people feel like, well, all of my time is now not dedicated to taking care of my family and working. I now have a little bit of free time so I can help to add my part in to make the world a better place. The more that we can liberate people from the confines of a daily struggle for survival, the more that we can bring prosperity to the different countries that we're in and that's why it feels so frustrating to be in the united states is because of course again in places like afghanistan and in places uh, all over the world there are situations that really do limit people there there are you know 
about a hundred different obstacles that need to be overcome before you can start to try and achieve some of these larger nationalized goals. Uh, but even there, it is 100% possible. It is 100% capable in someone's lifetime to achieve. Here, it is more than reasonable to assume that it would be actively progressing that way, and we're seeing it get worse and worse instead. We're seeing people uh, become more and more unequal in terms of wealth. We're seeing people get more and more into poverty. We're seeing people more and more uh, work paycheck to paycheck. We're seeing people more and more have to rely on uh, you know, uh, friends and neighbors and family to help them make ends meet because they can't do it themselves. And that's awful. And we need a better way to move forward. Uh, Tosania says it has its annual. Muhammad said up. Uh, Tal Vincent says the Taliban don't practice Islam the right way. If at all, Islam is very peaceful religion. If you read about it, absolutely. Uh, I completely agree, Vincent. Uh, Full Sock says it's interesting to learn about another religion as a Norse pagan. Uh, interesting. Tell me a little bit more about that, Full Sock. Uh, Telsania says, I'm a Christian, but I find Islam a very interesting religion. In fact, I did a survey the other day, 49% of my uh, citizens are Muslim. That's awesome, Telsania. Very cool and very diverse population. Um, Vincent says, I'm not religious uh, personally. I have morals that I follow. Uh, uh, I just have morals that I follow. I have a moral compass. I agree with that. Uh, and there are a lot of people who feel the same, Vincent. Absolutely. Telsania says, I agree with your views, AP. Citizens of your micronation need to be well-fed, housing, sleep, etc. Absolutely. Um, Full Sox says, I also agree. And that's a, a huge issue. If we talk about these, you know, these big ideas and saying, oh, well, this is what we need. This is how we're going to make the world better. Yada, yada, yada. Here's my stick. Here's my chant. Here's my call. How do we do that? What's the next step? How do you actually practically do that? You have to get the word out. We're doing that now. We're talking to people. We're letting people know about Eternia, about micronationalism, about helping it to grow. You have to make money. That's also part of what we're doing right now. We're trying to reach monetization. Monetization will mean that every ad that is run on our videos, that's already run on those videos, will become a little bit of ours. Right now, YouTube is making money on us, and we don't get a cent of it. But if we keep grinding and we keep pushing toward that monetization goal, we'll have to bend over backwards to do it, but we'll finally jump through their hoops. We'll finally get to the point where we are monetized and we get to earn just a smidge, just a fragment of that money that's already going into their pockets from our content, from your viewership. So if you feel like, oh, well, I've watched a ton of ads for Eternia. Oh, well, I've hung out in a ton of live streams. You know, where's my benefit for that? If you were to continue watching and continue helping us to push to, uh, we've already gone through a thousand subscribers. You guys have already helped us hit that milestone. Now, if we just get that 4,000 watch time hours, which we're pushing for every single day, we can hit it. And more so than that, we can achieve monetization. So we can get to the point where all of that watch time, all of that time that you've spent actually starts to make a bigger and stronger impact on Eternia. Then we can do things like starting to attempt to hire people, starting to finish the buildings that we're developing in Vitae, starting to try and get people to follow us around and make edited content that's bigger and better for you guys. Uh, we are trying to grow as fast as we can, and the more that we can push, the more that we can get more money, the more that we can get more people to join and participate in what we're doing, the bigger and better we can become. So uh, that is a, a great option and a great opportunity to assist us uh, and it would mean the world um, on top of that again just your viewership just watching and staying in these streams as long as possible uh, if for whatever reason we end a stream and you're like eh, I could still go for more stream though uh, just you know if you wanted to watch some of our previous streams to try and learn stuff message me if you have questions uh, about you know hey do you have a stream on this or that and I'll send you the link uh, I've done that for plenty of people where we just have a ton of content out there that people have no idea we've actually covered uh, and so there's plenty of opportunity for us to talk about that. On top of that, uh, even if you uh, are saying, oh, well, you know, I would help out, but I, I have other stuff that I want to do, uh, what you could always do is like uh, Ari posted the other day, uh, both in the Discord as well as in our uh, chat, uh, you can straight up, uh, like, go to sleep or do whatever you're doing and just put the stream on mute. Uh, on your computer and just have the stream run in the background of whatever you're doing uh, and just have it play and continue to go even if you're sleeping even if you're whatever and that gives us a huge amount of watch time it really will help to boost us up every single day uh, right now we're constantly battling because we were 
over uh, 3,700 watch time hours. Uh, and now we're down to 3,684, I think. So we're trying to push back up over the 3,700 mark. Uh, it gets hard because the closer we get to 4,000, the more easy it is for us to get pushed back. So we're trying to push harder and harder and harder uh, to keep our watch time hours growing, to get more people in these streams, and to eventually hit 4,000. Uh, and then once we do that, we'll be able to continue growing bigger and larger. Um, we still have a lot that we're planning to do. Uh, we're hoping to go to MicroCon. I am, you know, uh, I was initially saying at the beginning of the summer, I was very confident about it because I was trying to get a job, uh, but I ended up in a situation where I'd applied for a ton of jobs and wasn't getting any. Uh, I got accepted to grad school, which was awesome, but now I also have been accepted to a job. The one issue is it's a full-time job and I'm supposed to start like two weeks before microcon so if i end up uh, having the opportunity i want to speak to my new boss and ask about uh going to microcon uh, and seeing if i can get uh, time off but uh that's again pretty early in uh an employment so if there's any difficulty with that i may have to forego microcon uh, though i'm really hoping not to if i do i'm hoping that i can send somebody in my place and still have attorney a go and have fun but i just i don't know I i'm really trying to figure it out um Vincent said, sorry, we might uh, have trolls joining. Don't mind me, I'll be kicking them out. Hey, thank you very much, Vincent. That helps a lot. Uh, it really does. We we have people like Vincent who are actively participating in the streams and helping us to be like guardians of the stream, which is awesome. Uh, again, it, it makes the content better. It makes the quality better. Uh, and it helps us to learn more about our, our community. Mercia says, hey, everyone. Hey, new Mercia, how are you? Uh, tell us a little bit about your micronation and also subscribe if you haven't. Like the video if you haven't because uh, it helps us to continue growing growing. Um, again, we've been talking about all this stuff, about micronations, about, you know, growing and developing and becoming uh, more and more developed. The largest question I have, the largest problem I have with a ton of micronations that I want to ask you all about is what it means for a micronation to actually successfully develop. You know, of course, we, we have the idea of you know, uh, achieving, uh, achieving human recognition and becoming a country just like any other. But for your personal, uh, for your personal uh, experience in micronationalism, a cut below that, where would you be satisfied? You know, if your micronation did this, this, and this, what would satisfy you? Where would you be happy with your micronation? Uh, Muhammad says they have no morals, no moral compass. Talking about the Taliban, I imagine. Uh, and then Muhammad says, read my comments. You've skipped a few. I'm sorry, Muhammad. My apologies. Um, let me see if there was any other that I read. Uh, so the last one was real Muslims. And then you said up uh, with a thing. Uh, some of the comments might have gotten like deleted or moved or something for some reason. Um, uh, and then said they have no moral compass, uh, no morals, no moral compass. Uh, that Those are all the, the ones that I got besides read my comments. You've skipped a few. Uh, so let me know. Let me know if there was something else you were trying to say. Uh, my apologies, Mohammed. Uh, Vincent said he's caught up, I believe. Uh, definitely. I, I'm trying my best to be. Uh, right now we have four viewers and... Uh, 16 likes. I appreciate you guys hanging out. The more viewers that we can get in, the more viewers that we can keep in here, the longer that we can go uh, and the more that we can continue to develop. Uh, Muhammad says, good job, Taliban. Oh, goodness. Uh, you have deleted the truth. <laughs> they cursed the Taliban. They're, they're deleting your, your information. Oh, goodness. Uh, I, I'm sorry to hear. Uh, Muhammad, what were you what were you trying to say? Uh, Tausania says, to answer that question, I'm happy with the current state of my micronation, but I really hope to make uh, my streets and houses cleaner. That's wonderful. Uh, so is it, tell me this, uh, new, uh, oh, excuse me, uh, Tosania. Tosania, is your micronation uh, designed around like a neighborhood? Is it designed around, you know what I mean, uh, specific houses that your friends or family own? Uh, tell us a little bit about it, because you're saying you want to make the houses and streets cleaner. Um, are you talking about, like, physically cleaner, like you want to just go and wash them? Are you talking about cleaner as far as trying to make them, uh, you know, um, nicer, like you're, you're trying to, you know, build improvements on them? Um, are you, what, what do you mean by cleaner, I suppose? Um, are you trying to refurbish them? Um, I'm really curious. And also, that's a noble goal. You know what I mean? Just to improve the the living conditions of the people who are there, I think is should be one of the top goals of a micronation. Should be one of the biggest, most important things that we as micronations strive to achieve. Because those are the things that are going to be most long-lasting. Um, Muhammad says they've been oppressed since 
the 1990s by the Taliban, around 300,000 people, uh, Hazara people, uh, have been killed during their rule. They are being killed right now. Oh my goodness, Muhammad. I am so sorry to hear that. That is brutal. Uh, again, I, I really don't... Uh, I've never fully understood the situation. I don't think I ever fully will. But it's horrifying to hear that. To think about that mass scale of people being attacked. To be murdered. To have their lives taken away from them. Full, rich lives. Many of them being women and children. Many of them being young people. Many of them being people who were born into a fight that they had nothing to do with. Is horrible. And I am so sorry that that huge loss of life has happened that's that's shameful um vincent says i'm super stressed about this house closing ap the realtor broke the pool uh up trying to fix it and they don't want to pay us the money to fix it or fix it themselves uh oh goodness I, i'm sorry to hear about that vincent um i hope everything works out uh it's weird that the realtor broke it right like because that's weird if the, I imagine it wasn't the realtor, I imagined it was the, because the realtor is just the person that sells the house, right? Like, they're just the person who puts it on the market. I imagine it was the person who was trying to sell the house, who, like, hired somebody or tried to do it themselves to, like, patch up and, like, fix the house, right? And so the realtor is explaining to you guys, like, hey, the owner of the house wanted to, like, clean up the pool or fix the pool, and they broke it, so now it doesn't work. Uh, and the, the pumps messed up or whatever. And so then, you, which I imagine is what it meant by like broke the pool. Maybe they like physically cracked it or something. But I imagine you're saying the pump is messed up. Uh, that being the case, uh, it, it does seem ridiculous that they wouldn't either like give you the money, like reduce the price enough to allow you to fix it or to, uh, uh, or to fix it themselves before they, they sell the house. That's kind of on them. Uh, you know, I would say, hey, then just give the house a big price cut. Like, if you're going to give us a broken pool, uh, just give it a big price cut. Christian says a successful micronation would be one that's steadily increasing its population over time, uh, is able to fund its projects on a semi-frequent basis, and is capable of affecting localized change. Uh, that's smart, uh, Christian. I 100% agree with that. I think those goals are very admirable, but of course they're very big and they're very general. Um, you know, steadily increasing population. Does that mean residents? Does that mean citizens? Does that mean uh, people who are uh, recognizing themselves as a part of your nation? Or does that mean someone who is actively doing a job in your nation? Uh, that can, you know, be something, for example, where plenty of micronations have, you know, I have over a thousand citizens, I have over 5,000 citizens, I have 30,000 citizens. You know, if you go to Ladonia's website, they have an insane number of citizens. They're like, we we have over 50,000 citizens or something like that. Not not exactly, but 13,000 citizens, 18,000 citizens, something like that. Uh, but I, I don't think all those citizens necessarily are actively engaged and participating in their nation. So what does it mean to have a citizen and what kind of citizens are you referring to? And then you're saying uh, is able to fund their projects on a semi-frequent basis. Uh, I agree with that. Again though, um, like for scale, uh, does it mean that you're successful like in whatever scale that is? Like you're, you're just saying as long as you're growing, if I understand that correctly. Like you have a population that's growing, even if it's going from like one person to two people uh, and you know, uh, funding a project that is, you know, uh, you know, starting a, uh, starting a, uh, a treasury or whatever, where you're putting like $5 in the, in the thing every day. Like, is that considered in the, in the same thing? Like, is that still growth and progress? Um, uh, and is capable of affecting localized change. And then they go out and like pick up cans on the side of the road or whatever. Like, it, does that count in your, in, in your vision? Or are you talking about like, no, 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 this has to be like, a, a community of people who all live together who you know that population is growing where you're actively buying like new land and like bulldozing places and building houses and uh you're you're organizing like rallies and like changes of like government policies and stuff like that and lobbying like what what's the where's the scale with that uh or is there one uh it does it all count Muhammad says it's designed around some na around a neighborhood. Some friends and family are in my micronation, but I'd say uh, both about the cleanliness. Um, but for now, I and my government will focus on physically. Makes sense, just like physically cleaning it, like like you know washing it and, and making sure that it looks nice. That's wonderful. I'm glad to hear about that, uh, Tasania. 
Mohammed says, screams and gunshots. We'll be back soon. Oh my goodness, Mohammed, please be careful. Uh, as always, we're thinking about you. We want you to do well, uh, and we want you to be okay. Uh, last time Mohammed left us uh, on a stream, he was shot. He was injured, uh, and, and I have been significantly worried about him ever since. I, I believe he's, uh, you know, a, a shot isn't something that heals quickly. That, that's something that's still active damage, uh, and still is something that's going to be affecting uh, his body. I, I would say on top of that, that's something that is uh, really, really urgent because there isn't uh, great health care there. there. There isn't, you know, a, uh, a wonderful 24-7 hospital that he can go to uh, and be taken care of. Uh, you know, it, it is constantly going to be a struggle for him, especially having to fight for survival while having been shot and having to deal with a, uh, a wound. Uh, of that magnitude. Uh, that's not something, you know, if you were shot uh, you know, and, and you were at, uh, you know, in a more comfortable life, uh, the doctor would tell you, do not move, do not do strenuous exercise, lay in bed, get bed rest, try to heal, try to have that wound close. Muhammad is running around shooting and fist fighting people, like, with, with an open wound. That is, you know, maybe it's sewn now, but it could, it could easily rupture. That's, very scary, and I, I'm concerned about him. I'm concerned about his well-being, because that's not only not an easy situation, it's actively made worse every time he goes out, because one, it's it's prolonging the injury and potentially exacerbating the injury, but as well, it's putting him in a situation of vulnerability because he's already injured, um, and, and people who may notice that may target him specifically because of it. Vincent said, the liner is shredded inside the pool, and they're draining it uh, and broke it uh, and won't finish uh, or fix their mess up. Uh, oh, weird. So it sounds bad then. Yeah, that sucks. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Tausania says, Christian, I definitely agree with you. Absolutely. Ari joined in. Ari, it's good to see you. Thank you for hanging out. Torrance says, as a former uh, realtor, the agent had no business trying to fix a pool. Uh, agreed, 100%. Like, that's not even in your job description. Like, you're, why would you invest that much interest in... Like, you're just trying to sell the person's house. You're not trying to you know, uh, do a makeover on it. That's their job when they're trying to sell the house to, to get it to sell. You're just showing people the house and saying, hey, this is the offering price. You know, this is what they, they want for it. This is, uh, you know, what the, the asking price is. Uh, and uh, this is how they're trying to move forward with the sale. Uh, that's that's weird. Um, all right, it's good to see you. Ari says, I ran down my PC when I saw the live stream, do my PC when I saw the live stream on my tablet. Thank you so much, Ari. Ari has been helping us out again a ton uh, with doing things like playing our live streams uh, overnight when, they, uh, when they're going to sleep, uh, you know, and, and trying to keep up with us even when we're not on stream. And I would ask you guys to do that as much as you can. Uh, again, I know that's difficult. I know you would be like, well, you know, but I have other things to do, which is 100% respectable. If you can't, you can't. But it makes a huge difference personally in my life and in the Empire of Eternia. If you want to see bigger and better things from the Empire of Eternia, the more that you can help us in little ways like what Ari said, you know, running our streams when we're not on stream, you know, playing live streams, keeping things on loop. Uh, if you can, when you go to sleep or whenever, uh, it, it does help us because uh, I, I don't want you to do that forever, certainly, because eventually uh, that is just a lot of electricity. Uh, you know, it, it hurts the environment. But for the time being, we are trying to push to uh, 4,000 watch time hours, and we really do want to get that. So I think we'll be able to do a lot of good with that money, and it'll be something that uh, ultimately helps us to stabilize in the future. Uh, so the closer that we can push toward monetization and, and our watch time hours, uh, especially over the next month, uh, we're really going to try and do that so that we can, can hit the ground running. Um, it, you guys helping and being here, a part of these streams, helps an insane amount. You have absolutely no idea how big an impact that can make on us uh, and how much we can achieve after getting that monetization. So being here, supporting us, makes all the difference in the world, and I am so excited to see each and every one of you. Uh, Christian says, that's correct. Uh, ooh, uh, sorry, uh, one more thing. 
uh, Tausania says, honestly, my government has 10 people, which are my friends. It works a little bit differently than an actual government since it's a smaller government. Uh, but that makes sense. And that's what micronationalism is all about. I wouldn't sweat that at all. Again, there are like plenty of scales and ways to grow and develop. Uh, like I was saying uh, to Christian, who mentioned earlier, you know, as long as your population's growing, as long as you're making money, as long as you're, you know, um, what, what was the other thing he said? Uh, making local change, uh, that that all counts. So I was like, okay, but what scale is that? What what counts toward that? And he was like, any and all scales. Uh, so that being the case, uh, being at whatever scale you're at, being at whatever size your micronation's at, that's still progress and that's still success. So long as you are achieving things, so long as you are moving forward and making progress, you are doing well and we're proud of you. Christian says, that's correct. The bigger shared trait that indicates success in these fields is growth. Absolutely. Um, Ari says, BTW, my Discord uh, has a Hello Kitty profile picture with a name along the lines of uh, line and then like heart and then line. Very cool. Thank you, Ari. Uh, if you hit us up uh, via DM, I will uh, definitely appreciate it. And I would, uh, I would love to learn more. Um, Muhammad says, another child beaten to death. Jesus Christ. But monsters were killed by our fighters. Seven-year-old Fatima, daughter of Ahmed, my new best friend. I'm sorry. I'm... A seven-year-old little girl was beaten to death by the Taliban. Someone who was the daughter of one of your close friends, someone who you care a lot about and I'm sure had spent a significant amount of time caring for and watching over. That's horrible. I mean, it... it I've said this before, but it, it really is a, a nightmare scenario I think most of us cannot understand. The concept of waking up every day, meeting people, getting connected to people, talking to people in your local community, you know, sharing this bond of being absolutely scared, trying to fight back an invasion that seems like it's never ending, a group of people who want nothing but just to harm you and your family, and you have this tight-knit group of people who are trying their best to push back and support each other, and every day you have to get up uh, and know that you're going to see another one of those people who you've grown so close to, who you've made effectively a family with, get killed, that you're going to lose another one of them almost every day. That's horrible. And I'm so sorry to hear that, Muhammad. That's awful. Um, Muhammad says, oh God, oh no, I have to comfort Ahmed. I will be back. Uh, please, uh, please be careful, uh, Muhammad. Um, send Ahmed our, our condolences. Um, I am so sorry. I am so sorry, uh, Ahmed and, and Muhammad. This is Again, something I don't think many of us can ever understand. Losing a child so young to such a violent act is abhorrent and is shameful. It's something that the Taliban should never, never be able to do, but never be able to live down that they have done. Um, you, you fought back, you, you got rid of those people, but that's something that will never go away. The damage that they've inflicted is permanent. And I, I'm sorry for that. Tasania says, how does the attorney and economy work? Um, it's a great question, Tasania. Um, the attorney and economy uh, is a development based around individual industries that we have. So we focus on specific projects in specific interest groups, um, specific areas. Uh, that we then uh, focus on and uh, try to make money through. So for example, we have a metal refining business. Uh, that metal refining business makes and sells ingots uh, from scrap metal, which we then sell on the internet. Uh, we actually have uh, that advertised on the Imperial Market, um, Etsy.com, uh, that you can check out and support us through. Um, on top of that, we also have our, excuse me, um, our Imperial Market in general, where we create uh, you know, things for the government of Eternia, uh, things like, you know, our, um, our identification licenses, uh, our, uh, our identifications, you know, licenses, uh, documents, which can all be purchased, uh, through the Imperial Market as well, our Etsy shop, um, and, uh, the link is, uh, either in the description, uh, I should post it, uh, later today, or, uh, and it's in the description of most all of our previous videos, um, or, especially our most recent one, because I made sure of it. 
um, or uh, you can check it out uh, on our website as well. Um, so the Imperial Market's the basic place to learn about a lot of the different opportunities we have economically. Again, our metals refining industry, uh, some of our government issued things such as uh, the Imperial Note, which is our currency, as well as uh, the uh, different licenses that we offer. Uh, again, we have citizen li citizenship licenses, uh, we have plenty of other things, uh, you know, uh, the uh, foreign dignitaries licenses, stuff like that. On top of that, uh, we also have uh, our uh, our different metals and things that we make, you know, not metals, M-E-T-A-L-S, uh, like we do with our ingots and metal refining. Uh, we also have M-E-D-A-L-S, you know, metals that are for pageantry, for decoration, for uniforms, and for things like that. We have the unity metal that we created uh, exactly for that purpose, so that micronations can come together and show uh, that while we're all different, while we all have different aspirations, uh, that we can all come together to show support for micronations as a whole and to support peace in the micronational community as well as in the world overall. So the unity metal, uh, M-E-D-A-L, uh, is something that you can purchase on the Imperial Market that we hand stitch uh, and make for uh, each and every person who purchases one. Uh, I have a video showing kind of that uh, that progress where we actually, you know, uh, we uh, put together the metal, we make it, uh, we package it, and then we actually uh, write a handwritten thank you letter. Uh, I do for any purchase on the Imperial Market. I write a handwritten thank you letter uh, to the person who purchased from us, and then I also uh, will attached to that, on top of that, uh, a, a seal, uh, the Empire's wax seal, um, which has the arrow of progress on it, our, our symbol and our flag. So um, we, we put that together. I do an actual ceremony with it um, that uh, a lot of the time is not on camera, but sometimes is filmed. We do our wax seal ceremony uh, and we write a handwritten letter. We also attach either the notes, the license, the medal, or the uh, unity medal that you have purchased, uh, the ingot or the unity metal that you've purchased. Uh, we put that all together into a package uh, and then we send that out to you through the mail. Uh, so that's, you know, a great way to help us out and to support us. Uh, these things are fairly cheap, you know what I mean, like 10 or $15 um, for the unity metal. Um, you know, I think like $10 for an ingot, uh, you know, stuff like that. Like it's really not super expensive. Uh, the shipping costs a little bit more depending on what the thing is. But again, you're looking at like max $20. Uh, to, to purchase something. So it, it really does help us a lot and it, it helps us to continue to grow as a nation and do more. Uh, if that's something that you're interested in, definitely consider that. Uh, we also have our Ko-Fi page where we do commissions. Uh, so uh, for our Ko-Fi page, for example, we are doing things to help reach out to other nations and to promote them through our own um, tourism industry. So uh, as Eternia continues to grow and as Vite establishes itself more and more, uh, our territory, we are going to be offering visitation uh, to people who want to tour uh, Vite and Eternia's uh, developments. So that being the case, uh, we're going to have different festivals, different things going on there, but at the same time we are going to be trying our best to, um, we're going to be trying our best to help out via, um, um, uh, the uh, support through the uh, Garden of Nations. The Garden of Nations is our project that we have. Again, through our Ko-Fi page, you can check that out. Uh, link should be in some of the descriptions of our videos uh, where we are. You can find our Ko-Fi page, go to the commission section, uh, and we actively talk about how uh, we, if you purchase that specific commission, you will get uh, a flag, uh, your nation's flag, stuck in the ground in a garden uh, that we have along with uh, the name of your nation written there. Uh, and so it's just to show off when other people come to Vite, uh, hey, these are all the nations who have supported us. Uh, this is the Garden of Nations. This represents the micronational community as a whole, very similar to our uh, micronational map, which is something free online that everybody can check out. The Garden of Nations will be something that specifically highlights those nations who have gone above and beyond to support Eternia uh, and trying to advertise them and show support to them, uh, to everyone who visits us, from you know foreign dignitaries of other nations to uh, to you know just the general public passing by. Uh, we're going to try to show those people that you know these are the nations who are doing something. These are the nations who are going above and beyond. These are the nations uh, that we really recommend you talk to and meet. And, and make connection with. So uh, we'll be moving forward with that. Um, um, Vincent says, so to clarify the contractor, I guess the company selling it hired a company to do it, and the company they hired messed up, 
messed it up a lot of legal stuff but my dad's assuring me it will be okay absolutely i imagine it will uh, again i think they're just arguing about like you know you need to reduce the price because you can't say oh well we promised you a house in this condition and offered it to you for this amount of money and then you started to take that amount of money and and purchase the house with it and then all of a sudden we messed the house up and made it significantly worse but we still want the same amount of money for it uh you know if if you're selling someone an apple right uh, and you say this apple's uh, a dollar right and then they start to take it and then you throw it on the ground and like you know it splats and then you like pick it up and it's like pieces of apple and then you go okay where's your dollar they go no 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 hold up now it's you're trying to sell me like a messed up apple they either won't want it anymore or if they do they'll be like you gotta severely reduce the price of that apple what are you talking about so i'm sure your dad's just trying to negotiate and make sure that uh, you get the best thing for your family um Christian said, Muhammad, this is a tragic loss. I send my condolences to Ahmed and their family. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, Tasania said, that's pretty cool. Our micronation at Tasania is a bit similar. We sell food and sometimes, and some materials we find. That's wonderful. Uh, PlayStation says, you are all loved. Things will get better. Thank you very much, PlayStation. I appreciate that. Again, I'm sure Muhammad appreciates that a lot. Uh, Ari says, everyone suffering in the world has prayers from the Eternian community. 100%, absolutely. We support you, we're thinking about you, and we want the best uh, for uh, our brothers and sisters around the world. Uh, Christian says, I would like the Imperial Senate to have uh, a permanent meeting uh, area, an office for the Emperor, a location to curate Primarian artwork, and, uh, power, and to power our nation using renewable sources by the year 2030. Uh, that's wonderful. Um, I would say uh, that that sounds incredible. Uh, also, uh, if you guys have artwork that you create, uh, you should definitely send it my way. I would love to see it, uh, and I might happily advertise it, depending on the situation. Uh, I would be excited to see it. Um, Vincent said that's ex uh, exactly what's happening. You explained it. Uh, 100%. Uh, Vincent, I'm so sorry to, to hear that that's happening, but I, I think things will work out well. Um, Christian said, all factors contingent on owning real estate. Absolutely. But at the same time, I will say this, Christian. I know you're in Texas, which is a bit far away from little old Alabama. But I will say, uh, we definitely have opportunities for stuff like that. You know, we're, we're not willing to necessarily sell uh, our, uh, our land, per se. But we are happy to uh, showcase other nations on that land. So uh, there are opportunities that we have for nations who may not be able to afford land right away uh, to be able to do things on the land that we have. So, for example, we would love to curate, uh, you know, Primarian artwork and stuff like that and be able to host a museum of uh, Primarian artwork, things like that. Uh, so if that's something that you're interested in, um, definitely let me know. Um, again, it would have to be something financial that we figured out, uh, but it would certainly be a cheaper route and potentially a better route uh, for the short term for you to develop something for Primaria. Uh, so definitely let me know. Um, I, I, would, I would appreciate it. Um, in addition, discussing micronationalism and discussing the progress that we have here, it's always difficult because finding ways to connect nations is really hard. Again, uh, you know, this is something that we're trying to do now with Primaria, and, and we're discussing this in real time, but with a lot of nations, there is a lot more difficulty that, that occurs. Uh, you know, you will find nations uh, that, first off, you have to kind of filter to, through a ton of nations because you don't know that everybody's going to have the same interests or ideas or opportunities available uh, that will match up with your own. So trying to find people who are a good fit is hard enough on its own. Um, uh, on top of that, the the larger issue becomes that once you do find those groups that are, you know, relatively fit for doing things with your micronation, whether that's, you know, uh, developing trade deals economically, whether that's, you know, uh, working together on social media projects or what have you, uh, you still have to enter this issue of, okay, so we have all this ongoing, but what do, uh, you know, what do these two different nations want that's going to keep that relationship consistent and help it to grow? That's a really hard thing to do. Those negotiations, figuring things out, making sure that both nations are able to commit and commit reasonably to what they can afford, but also doing so in a way that doesn't leave one or the, one or the other feeling like they're getting the short end of the stick or a, a rough deal really, really is a tough thing to negotiate and figure out. A lot of micronations 
barely, uh, you know, rarely do figure this out, if at all. And so a lot of the time, micronational alliances, organizations, trade deals, diplomacy, what have you, uh, end up being more so around uh, a show of friendship and a show of support for one another, one another's nations. Uh, there are plenty of, for example, declarations of friendship or, uh, you know, mutual recognition treaties and things like that that basically say, hey, this is a group that we like, but there's not too much that we can do. You know, that that's the that's the extent of it, is that we like this group, we're happy to see them doing well, uh, and they're happy to see us doing well. And it's kind of like a, the effect of a micronational handshake, you know what I mean, is, is what it is. Like, it's a handshake and a picture, uh, you know, which is, which is cool, but that doesn't actually develop a ton for your nation in the long term, you know what I mean? It develops that ally, it develops that friendship, but at the same time, what is it doing for the long scale, uh, uh, the longevity of your nation? What is it doing for, you know, creating increased opportunity for growth and development? A lot of the time, that's the sticking point. A lot of the time, that's the hard pill to swallow. A lot of the time, uh, in trying to do that, micronations come up short. And so this is something that's really, really tough. Um, and, and something that we'll have to continue more in another video, but is still necessary to discuss as far as trying to get a good understanding of where it is that micronations lack, where the community is lacking as a whole, and kind of what we can hope to do about that. Um, Ari chimed in and says, AP, I know attorney is an absolute monarchy, I think, which we are, uh, but uh, I think once you get uh, people in the land, will you host elections for ideas and helpers? Uh, so we won't host elections, we will appoint people. Uh, that's what we do now. We have a government. Uh, we have, you know, for example, uh, a master treasurer uh, for the House of, uh, House of Treasure. Uh, we have open positions in the House of Others right now uh, for people to help with our social media and marketing and, you know, foreign relations and stuff like that. Uh, we have a lot of opportunity here. It's just that those aren't based on elections. You have to first be an attorney and citizen to get appointed to those positions, uh, and you also have to be somebody who is a particularly dedicated attorney and citizen. So we don't just choose anybody to be a part of our government. Those people have to be really, really dedicated and they have to be people who uh, want to see the best for Eternia. So uh, those are going to be the people who are going to be with us for years and years and years and we need to know that. So uh, you know having regular progress, having regular updates, showing us that there is something that you can do uh, that helps us consistently uh, is, is a huge huge factor in determining you know what I mean government positions and things like that if that's specifically what you're uh, you're referring to. Uh, Vincent said he has to go um, um, uh, see you later. Uh, see you, Vincent. It was good to see you. Uh, thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, so yeah, going back to that, uh, just talking to people about uh, the you know uh, the concept of the attorney and government growing and developing is something that is really really tough because it's about finding the right people, not just people who will fit our citizenship uh, requirements. Because there are plenty of people who are super dedicated to micronationalism uh, and who would do a ton for attorney. I know that. But those people aren't necessarily willing to dedicate to Eternia. They'll say, you know, I'm ha you know, I, I would do a website for you. I'd do this or that or whatever. Uh, but you ask them, okay, so you know, uh, would you give up your other micronational citizenships to become a part of Eternia? They say, absolutely not. No, why would I ever do that? Uh, you know, I, I love the other micronations that I'm a part of too much, and I respect that 100%. But if that's the case, I think those people should focus on the other micronations that they're supportive of, so that way those micronations can get the most out of their citizenship. It's the same thing for Eternia. So Eternia has fairly sh uh, strict citizenship regulations, uh, so it, it narrows down the pool of our, our population. But then on top of that, within that population, in order to become a part of the government, you really have to uh, go above and beyond just that normal citizenship requirement. It's not just that you are an active, productive citizen. It's that you're somebody who is really dedicated to attorney. Somebody who's willing to be doing things as much as they can, uh, as much of the time as possible. There's somebody who is thinking beyond what they're doing uh, currently and trying to move forward to... Uh, <laughs> move forward to uh, bigger and better things in attorney. You know, they're, they're the visionaries. They're the people who uh, can see the way forward and are actively trying to make moves to achieve that for us. Uh, they, you know, have to prove themselves to be in a, capable of a leadership role within attorney. And those are going to be the people who are rewarded most quickly uh, as we continue to grow and develop. So, yes, once we have residents on the land, I think there will be more and more opportunity for that because the people who we're trusting enough with residency to give, like, free housing to are 
are going to be people that we're planning to do a lot with. People who, you know, are going to be working on attorney and land, potentially on videos and attorney and stuff, probably every day, uh, or if not every day, uh, you know, like once a week at least. So uh, those people are going to be the people that you guys are going to get to, to know a lot more uh, intimately. And on top of that, you're going to get to uh, see them transition from those initial residencies all the way into government positions uh, and into helping us to grow and develop as leaders in Eternia, pulling other uh, smart and successful people under their wings and bringing them into the fold as well. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a lot about long-term growth, 100%. Um, Muhammad says, oh Allah, he cried so much, I cried with him too. Muhammad, I am so sorry to hear about that. Um, again, I, I can only, I can hardly imagine the, the loss of a child and the suffering that that creates. Uh, especially from something so violent, especially with someone who you are so close to. Um, it's good that he has a friend there like you to comfort him, even in these worst of times. And I, I, I only wish I could be there for you more. Uh, again, my deepest condolences uh, to Ahmed and to you, Muhammad. I, I am I am so sorry. Um, continuing, Vincent said, AP, there's a ton of land for sale in Georgia. Like, there's 5.3 acres for sale, and it looks like it was a factory or something. It's cool, all the abandoned industrial stuff. Uh, that is awesome. Absolutely. I would say a lot of the time that land is very, very expensive. Uh, you know, right now we have 3.5 acres, uh, which is significantly smaller than 5.3. What is it? Uh, yeah, like literally the inverse. We have 3.5 acres. Uh, they're selling 5.3. Uh, but having a lot of, you know, equipment and industrial stuff, uh, it means it's probably in a fairly decent area. You know, it's probably commercially zoned. Uh, which means more than likely it is very, very expensive. You know, you could be looking at hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars for that property. And so um, while we would certainly love to do that, that may be a little bit easier said than done. Um, Vincent said, I got to go see y'all later. See you, Vincent. Good to have you. Christian said, trade, alliances, and recognition are all things we've sadly put on the back burner due to these factors you've listed, AP. So many micronations sadly conflate publicity with foreign policy, it seems. Absolutely, but Christian, that's why I hope to move forward and do something with nations who want something greater, like yourself. If you are saying, hey, I've been looking for micronations all over uh, who want to establish something sincere, but I don't really know who to look to, we got you, Christian. Hit us up. Let's talk about it. Worst comes to worst, something doesn't work out, but that's fine. We've dealt with that uh, a lot in our history, and I'm sure you have too. So let's discuss it. Let's see if we can't figure something out. Uh, Ari says, oop, AP said the S word. Yes, yes, uh, yes, Ari, I sure did. I was going to say yes, sir, or ma'am, but I didn't know. So yes, Ari, uh, 100%, we did say the S word. Muhammad said, can you tell me more about micronationalism? Absolutely, Muhammad. So... Micronations, uh, as a basic rule, are people who have wanted to start their own country. So, for a number of reasons, you know what I mean, for, uh, you know, people all over the world will come together, you know, either because they don't like the government that they're a part of, because they have some grand vision for the way that their society should be structured or what have you, they will say, you know what, I'm going to create my own country. Even if nobody else recognizes it, even if nobody else agrees with me, Today, I'm starting my own country. Uh, and so they'll start with that. They'll start with some little group or piece of land that they have that they can reasonably claim as their own, you know, property that they own, uh, you know, uh, a, uh, you know uh, an area that they have access to and control reasonably. Uh, and they will claim that as the territory for their country. And then they will try to grow on that. They will try to seek other people out who uh, support that idea and who want to become a part of their country. So sometimes they will do this by promising those people titles and things like that. Uh, sometimes they'll do this by, you know, getting those people together and trying to, uh, you know, start businesses uh, to, you know, promote economics and things like that. Uh, they will try to promote it on social media to let people know that they have created their own nation. Um, but a lot of the time it is a form of activism. Um, these people many times are really trying to develop a nation, trying to get that nation recognized by the world. Uh, but they do so for specific intent. You know, they're trying to solve a homelessness crisis. They're trying to uh, provide food and shelter for their people. They're trying to, you know, um, support specific ideological or religious views that they have. They're trying to support specific uh, people that they believe in and, and want to be leaders. Uh, so that being the case, there are 
numerous reasons why a micronation could and should develop. Uh, but at the end of the day, all of the things that bind them together are the fact that they want to develop their own country, and they identify as their own country. So uh, they consider themselves to be independent nations, and they are trying to grow their recognition by other people. They, they want other countries uh, and other people in those countries to see them as that nation um, and to agree that they are that nation. Um, this is a long, hard road to develop. Most people do not agree with or support micronations, uh, but it is something that people are continuing to push for daily. Uh, the Empire of Eternia, for example, um, our micronation was developed because uh, throughout my life I saw my parents struggle financially. You know, my father uh, had a master's degree uh, in. Uh, uh, he had a bachelor's degree in uh, biology, a master's degree in uh, uh, like business administration, and uh, my mother had uh, some college under her belt as well, although she never fully graduated with a degree. Uh, both of them worked for as long as I can remember. My father worked, you know, sometimes two, three jobs at a time. My mother almost always had a job, and yet they were always struggling. They were always struggling to pay bills. They could never seem to find enough money to support us. Uh, and we were always in a state of near financial collapse. You know, there were several times throughout my childhood where, uh, you know, it, there was, it was difficult to find something to eat or where, you know, it was difficult to, you know, know if we were going to be able to stay in the apartment that we were living in. We never owned land. We never had the opportunity to, uh, to make a more secure life for ourselves. We were always constantly struggling, and it was always something where we were having to rely on family and friends to help us to get by, and to help us to make ends meet. So that being the case, uh, as I got older, I thought, you know, there has to be some way politically to make this better. You know, maybe if I support a specific political party, or maybe if I, you know, try to, uh, try to help, uh, you know, uh, do this or that, that it'll work out. Um, and then as I got older, I learned that, you know, our political system generally doesn't work for the, the lower classes of people, generally doesn't work for what the majority of people vote for. Uh, and so that being the case, uh, I decided, okay, well, I live in a very conservative area, uh, which is against my, my worldview. Uh, and so none of my votes are going to count if they're all against the majority of the state that I, I live in. Um, so that being the case, uh, I figured I needed to do something different. So I created this nation. Uh, I am trying to develop it for the specific purpose of providing free housing to people, for the specific purpose of providing opportunities for people to be employed and to feel safe and comfortable in that employment, to feel like they have opportunities to grow and that they have equity in that employment. So not just that you're getting paid an hourly wage, but that as the businesses that we develop grow, that you are having your salary grow with that, that you are getting specific bonuses attached to how well the business performs that you are getting uh, you know, specific uh, percentages of the value of the labor that you're producing. Um, all of these things being uh, fairly socialist ideas, but things that I feel are necessary to help benefit uh, the economy that we have in the United States. Um, Muhammad said, American dream, and then he said, holy Allah, I have to go, attack is starting, see you all. Uh, see you, Muhammad. Thank you for supporting me. Uh, thank you for supporting us, and we support you. Uh, please be careful. Uh, we're all thinking about you, and we, we hope you're okay. I, I can't wait to hear from you next time. Um, I, am, I am so sorry that you're dealing with this. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, so, wow. I, I just, sorry, that... Mm. Every time Muhammad goes, it makes me a little bit worried about him. It makes me a little bit nervous, so... Uh, I hope everybody's uh, doing all right, and I just, I'm sorry for the, you know, that I'm a little bit out of it right now, I just, that, that always catches me off guard. Um, uh, Christian says, attorney in metallurgy is fascinating to me in particular, but ah, what does uh, Primario export that can match literal blacksmith? Money. Money, if you have money, it will take money, you know what I mean? Like, Christian, it, uh, you're... You make it sound like there's like this big like complex thing to it, uh, money. You know what I mean? Like if you want to get us money, that helps a lot. Uh, on top of that, depending on what it is that you do, you know, are you a great creator? You know what I mean? Like you're saying you create art and stuff like that. Can you create us some art? You know, can you create us a video? You know, 
there, there's plenty of stuff that we can do that will help each other out. Uh, it's just about, you know, what, what the best way forward is. Um, and uh, there, there's lots of opportunity there. I, I don't think you have to go, oh no, what can we do? Like, I, I think there will be plenty of things. Um, Muhammad said, you know, again, he has to go. There was an attack starting. Uh, and he said the American dream. Yeah, that's that's something that that really is a is a weird topic for me because um, a lot of my life people have told me about that. You know that if you just work hard enough, if you you know believe in yourself, you can achieve whatever you want. And I'll say I certainly feel like that's relatively true to my case in the sense that you know my family didn't have a lot. Um, I don't think that was true in my father's case where he worked. A tut. He worked very, very hard, and yet he worked under people who, uh, you know, paid him and, and may have paid him uh, all right, I guess. But it, you know, his job was never secure. He never felt like you know he was really advancing in any way, and he wasn't really advancing in any way. Uh, his career, I think, for many, many years was stagnant until it started to decline, and there was nobody there to help him. There was no government regulation or anything that could help to support somebody who had supported it for so many decades. Again, you know, roughly 50% of the average American's income is taken by taxes, um, and whereas, you know, people who are in the millions and billions of dollars, fractions of a percent uh, of their income is actually taken by taxes through loopholes that they uh, exploit. So that being the case, seeing that my father, you know, put half of his net worth effectively in helping the country and trying to pay back uh, the benefits that the country uh, gave him, um, they really didn't give him a lot. So, you know, it, it feels very unfair and it feels very harmful that, you know, fortunately I was able to go to school, I was able to pursue, uh, you know, a bachelor's and now a master's degree in physics. Uh, I've been able to create my own country and start to uh, develop uh, a community of people who really care about making changes in the lives of uh, people who are less fortunate and people who need that help, uh, you know, hopefully so that they can live a better life in the United States and so that hopefully they can, uh, you know, reach better opportunities here than people who, uh, who are just struggling under that system. You know, we hope to be a support network. We hope to be a way for people to chase the American dream in a way that they haven't been able to before. Uh, and so I, I really feel proud of what we're doing here. And I, I think it's something that's necessary for us, as well as for other micronations, to continue to pursue. Um, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not something that's going to be easy, but it's something that is possible. And uh, I think when we talk about the American dream, that's not something that is specifically to America. You know what I mean? Uh, the, the sham part of the American dream is the concept that, you know, people can achieve whatever they want in America. As long as they grit their teeth and work hard, never give up, you can be anything you want to be. That's not necessarily true. Um, you know, if you're trying to be a billionaire, statistically speaking... 99.999% uh, of people in the United States are not going to be billionaires. Uh, the United States has the most billionaires per capita in the world, so uh, you know it, that number is even smaller for anyone else in the world in any other country. But that being the case, um, we still have a situation where we are actively trying to uh, pursue that as a concept that oh we really don't need to give people handouts we really don't need to help people we really don't need to you know invest in social safety nets and things like that we really don't need to provide people equitable employment that actually you know uh, grows their uh, their salary and their benefits uh, as their companies grow and develop and, and prosper uh, as the economy shifts uh, we don't need to provide more access to uh, things for the people who are suffering uh, in that employment um, when we ignore all of that, we're uh, we're uh, having this uh, this situation where uh, we're just saying, oh, if you work hard, you can achieve something, which is true. If you work hard, you can achieve something, no matter what situation you're in. But that's the human spirit. That has nothing to do with America. That has nothing to do with the great opportunities that we've been providing. In fact, in, if anything, it shows the reverse. That no matter how bad the situation in the United States gets, no matter how difficult uh, you know, uh, life 
for the average American gets. Americans are still super wonderful people who are a diverse background of people from all over the world, a testament to the human spirit, which shows that human ingenuity can overcome almost anything, even a government and a country that is like harming them. And I'm not saying that that's the case for everyone. Again, there's plenty of things that the United States does wonderfully and that they really do help with. But there is a lot of policy that is deeply, deeply flawed. And there's a lot of institutional development and design of the way that the country's run. It's deeply, deeply flawed. So in other countries, for example, where that same rule applies, where, you know, uh, anybody who's pushing hard enough and working hard enough can achieve something, um, it, in places that have more equity, in places that have more assistance, in places that have, for example, universal health care, in places that have, for example, uh, nationalized child care and uh, nationalized businesses and things like that, um, places that uh, decriminalize a lot of things that are uh, addictive for people, that, you know, try to seek helping people over throwing them in prison. Um, people live longer, happier, more successful lives. They're able to more easily chase their dreams. Uh, the United States is one of the few places that has like just an absolutely brutal work week. Um, you know, uh, a lot of places offer paid time off for most positions, even the, you know, the lowest minimum wage workers. Uh, a lot of places offer like extensive paid holiday, you know, uh, for, you know, paid vacation, same thing, uh, for a, a lot of workers. You know what I mean? Like, three, four, five weeks off of work uh, as a regular thing every year, whereas, uh, you know, uh, your, your uh, generic, generic business may, uh, in the United States, may not do that, may not even come close. So uh, it's, it's really difficult to see that happen. Uh, it's a testament to the human spirit that people overcome that, but nonetheless, it's really rough to see that people feel like, oh, if you just get your teeth and work hard, that you'll, you'll get it done, and that's because you're in America. Uh, that's, that's, not, that's not true. Um, Ari says, as an American, the American dream isn't really here uh, in America, TBH. Agreed. Ari says, as someone coming from a Chinese-American heritage, racism is the reason why I don't feel safe at my school. Uh, Ari, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, that's really rough. Uh, as well, that's alive and well in America. Racism is like an active thing. Uh, you can even see that, unfortunately, in our own chat. People are like happy to create micronations based around like racist ideologies. People are happy to uh, develop communities and, and ideas of, you know, grandeur that are are based around like hateful ideology, hate speech, racism, you know, uh, sexism, uh, homophobia. Uh, there is so many problems that are just deeply ingrained in people's family history and ideology that they can't see past it and they choose not to. They say, this is how things have always been. I've always seen this hate around. So the hate obviously has to be the right answer. And it's a shame. Ari, you should not have to feel concerned about going to school. Your education is incredibly important because it's going to shape who you are as a person and what you want to do. Education is a toolkit that allows you to move forward and to grow in the way that you hope to. That's something that it took me forever to learn because I didn't have enough people actively teaching me and showing me the proper way to do that. If you do not take advantage of your schooling, you will feel severely uh, limited and you'll feel, you know... Um, that you have a huge disadvantage among all the other people that you're competing with for jobs, that you're competing with for opportunities later in life. Uh, you know, people talk about how important college is and about, you know, that you need to do really well in, in your schooling so that you can get to a good college. That is absolutely true. And on top of that, it's something that a lot of people don't stress enough that not only do you need to, you know, work hard in school, but you need to find yourself in school. You need to know what it is that you're passionate about and really use your opportunity in school to learn that, to not just like sit there and absorb the information and make a good grade on the test, but actually to pursue it as an interest of yours. If you like, you know, science, if you like chemistry or biology or math or whatever it is, like pursue that with your heart's content, like, like keep learning about it, go above and beyond what you're learning in school, ask your teachers questions, like try to sincerely not just like learn the knowledge for the test, but learn it to use it practically in life because there are plenty of people that do that. There are like biologists on YouTube who actually like, you know, do biology experiments in their own time and like discover things. Same thing with chemistry, same thing with, uh, you know, uh, math and physics and engineering. Uh, 
uh, people create amazing, wonderful things using these skills that you learn in school. And the same thing with like history, you know, if you're a history nut, uh, you know, there are people who are, you know, hist uh, historians on YouTube who have huge followings of people who love their content, who love to learn about the intricacies of history because they didn't just learn the stories that everybody teaches you in, in high school or whatever. You learn uh, you know, the things that are the underdog stories. You learn the parts of history that people don't want to tell you about, that the winners don't want to talk about. Uh, and, and people love those historians for that. So you can really make a huge change in someone's life by educating yourself, even through art, even through music, even through, you know, no matter what you feel like is the, the subject that you're passionate about, even if it's not taught in your school, keep pursuing it. Keep learning more and more about it because you will be able to change someone's life with that one day. And the first person's life that you're going to change is your own. Uh, so feeling like you're getting bullied or feeling like you're getting harassed at school because of who you are, because of things that you can't change, because of your race, because of your ethnicity, because of your cultural heritage, you should be proud of who you are. You should be happy that you come from a group of people uh, who were, you know, uh, care about you enough to keep you in education, who care about you enough uh, to bring you to the place that they feel is the best for you. You know, people who uh, really want to see you do well in life and want to uh, help you to achieve whatever it is that you want. So you should not be ashamed of who you are. And anyone else who is, you know, trying to put you down uh, has a sad life to live, you know, because people who try to take each other down and drag each other down end up falling into the mud. And they, they end up suffering in their life over and over and over again. And they get frustrated and that's why they lash out at more people because they feel like, why isn't anyone helping me? You don't deserve help. You're worse than me. You're not as good as me. I'm better than everyone. And they end up just falling over and over again and people don't like them. That's the guy at the party uh, that, you know, starts getting into an argument or whatever and screaming and hooping and hollering and everybody gets real quiet and kind of goes, uh, oh, this is uncomfortable. I don't want to be here. And they kind of walk away from them. those bullies, those people who, you know, are, are going to be hateful to you. Um, they, in the adult world, they're, they're not the people who succeed. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, people who are, you know, um, sociopaths, sometimes people who are manipulative or, or vindictive or whatever, can sometimes, uh, you know, achieve crazy successes, but those are few and far between. A lot of the time, those people just end up struggling and suffering, uh, and they end up in lives that they didn't want in the first place. So I would say, ignore those people, know who you are, find people who care about you and who are going to support you, because there will be plenty of people who love the ideas that you have and love the interests that you have uh, at your school. You know, those may be the nerdy people, those may be the jocks, those may be whoever it is, find your, your niche group that you like, uh, you know, support those people, hang out with those people, and they will support you. Um, and on top of that, uh, those are going to be the people who, you know, you get to see later down the road and get to see their accomplishments and they get to see your accomplishments. Those are going to be the people who, you know, really care and really matter in your life, not the people who are, uh, you know, talking crap about you. Um, Ari says, uh, worst of all, it's happening uh, all around America. 100%. Um, Joking Game says, hope you stay safe, Muhammad. Absolutely. Christian says, something I'm strongly advocated for that still gets strange sideways glances from people even in my generation is the three-day work week. 100%. Um, I think, you know, it's something that's really, you know, strange because we don't understand it. I don't even think like a, the, you know, specifically having a, you know, a three-day work week, so to speak, is necessarily the right answer at that point. Like, sure, 100%, that is an option. But at the same time, instead of having like, a full, you know, super like, you know, intensive work week. If you're only work three days a week, why not spread that out, but just reduce the hours? You know what I mean? Reducing the hours that people are working day to day, I think helps a lot because sure, reducing the work week down to three days would help a lot because it would allow for, um, uh, would allow for people to pursue more that they wanted to throughout the week to take care of their families more. But a lot of the time, uh, businesses are not super productive running people eight hours a day. You know, people's productivity starts to wane and decrease the, the more that they're at work. So sure, cutting back the days that somebody works absolutely is effective for that. But also just cutting down the hours that they have to be at work for any one period of time uh, helps with that a lot as well. Giving people longer breaks, uh, giving people longer lunches, uh, you know, reducing the hours that they're going to be at work. Instead of an eight-hour workday, what about a, a six-hour or five-hour workday, uh, you know, for four or five days a week? Uh, that way you're still getting pretty much all the same productive 
productivity you were gonna get anyway uh, because the rest of those hours that people are super exhausted they're just gonna be you know running at half capacity and kind of barely getting things done and just looking at the clock waiting to go home so giving people breaks and then really you know having them be active and participatory in the in the stretches that they're at work I think would make things better make people feel more happy as workers but on top of that with all the automation that we're moving forward to uh, in in society allowing people that uh, reduced time at work would give them the opportunity to be more educated and to learn more skills that could be more useful in pursuing those automations and working with those automated tools uh, so it's a situation where we're advancing more and more quickly as a society and we really shouldn't be trying to grip onto these antiquated ideas of like work being this one very specific thing that worked for one very specific time during the industrial revolution now we have a whole different mindset for what work is how uh you know things progress how technology advances how creativity helps into that cycle uh how people you know uh dynamically address different problems and stuff that are going on and so it's weird to have one specific model for the way that a certain group of people work or whatever. I think work should be very diverse and, you know, people should have a lot of fluidity with, you know, what they do in their lives. Um, and I, I think, you know, that's a, a fairly socialist idea. You know, it, it's something that uh, people people really scoff at, but it's it's uh, very beneficial. And I think the future is uh, is moving toward that more and more. Uh, whether uh, whether we're going to make the policy changes for it or not, uh, eventually that's just going to be what the market demands. But uh, at the same time, I appreciate everybody hanging out. Um, um, joking says, when I was younger, I looked up to America. Now, not so much. Employment's right, safety. Uh, I don't see the appeal from my perspective anymore. Absolutely. Uh, it's It's definitely rough. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. Um, Christian says, I suppose it would be better to phrase it as a 30 hour work week then. 100% agreed. Uh, you know, for example, I have a friend, uh, who makes a ton of money doing stuff, uh, in, uh, computer science and he works almost exclusively from home. Uh, you know, he still works fairly regular hours. I think he works a 40 hour work week, but he still does so, uh, in a way that he is able to, uh, uh, he's still able to work 100% from home. All of his stuff is done on the computer, so he manages people. He's a manager at the group that he works for, uh, but he just, you know, works when he can at home and develops stuff and sends stuff out. Uh, he's very fortunate to be in that situation, uh, but it's not... Uh, something that should be uncommon. It is uncommon right now, but I think as people push more and more, it should be more and more focused on, you know, uh, developing opportunities for people to work away from an office and more at home um, uh, to be able to pursue the things that they want to. Christian says, I suppose it would be better to phrase it as a 30 hour work week. Absolutely. Raz says, I'm back. Uh, Raz, it's good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Raz says, what have we been discussing? Uh, the American dream, why Eternia was founded, what the problems with the United States are right now, what things we can fix, what things are better, what the benefits of the United States are and why, you know, it's, it, it sucks that there are all these problems, but it, it's good to be here. You know what I mean? There, there are a lot of things to talk about, but um, at the end of the day, I, I just want to say that all these micronations are pursuing something really, really important, and that is trying to make a difference within their communities. You have been existing in this community uh, for however long you've been alive, you know, in, in your local community, and that community may have changed. You may have moved places. Uh, Joking Games says, what is the average work week in America? 40 hours a week. Uh, 40 hours a week, five days a week. Uh, is is generally that, although uh, plenty of people work sometimes more. Uh, my father uh, works, you know, five days a week, uh, for example. But uh, previously, in his his previous position, he worked six days a week for you know, uh, you know, eight hours a day. So uh, e even more so, um, uh, you know, uh, forty eight hour work weeks was what he was working. So the the thing that I will say is you all have your perspectives. You're, you're in the communities you're in for a reason. You should feel lucky to be a part of those. You know, it, despite my issues and disagreements with the United States, I feel lucky to be in the United States and be a part of the societies that I am because things could be a lot worse. There have been benefits that I've been afforded, for example, in my education, uh, being here and being a United States citizen. Um, so I, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of my United States citizenship. That being the case, I think there are plenty of things that we could do better for our people. Um, I will say, uh, there is a lot of, of difficulty. There is a lot of suffering that happens, uh, in, in our communities, uh, not just in the United States, all over the world. And again, uh, we should be fortunate for where we're at, but that doesn't mean we should stop pursuing change. So, um, I, I know you all have your own ideas and reasons for, 
uh, what you what you want to do and how you want to pursue it. I suggest that you uh, work together to do that, and we will be right here to help along the way. Uh, as always, guys, if you can, continue to like the video, continue to hang out with us, uh, and support us on other videos. Uh, you know, if you have some more time today, I would recommend that you watch some more of our other videos. You know, keep a playlist of our live streams running. It would help us a ton uh, to continue to develop and to reach 4,000 watch time hours. Again, we're really close. We only have like 320 something watch time hours that we need uh, to be able to, 320, 319 something actually, 318 something. Uh, a little over 310 watch time hours we need. So the more that you guys help us, the more that you guys keep us pushing toward that 4,000, the more we will be able to achieve for you all. Uh, I appreciate that so much. You guys have no idea. And until next time, Eternia forever. See everybody. Peace.